beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed First Corinthians I see the smoke of his presence all around this place all around there's a song that says consuming fire sweet perfume his awesome presence feels this room this is holy ground This is holy ground. This is holy ground. I tell you, his presence is in this place. Hallelujah. Are you ready? First Corinthians 1, verse 9. Let's read together. One to read. Just the first three words, one to read. God is Again, God is he said, God is faithful. That's what we are going to explore that, that one first before we. God is faithful. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. He said, Hey, people, God is faithful. What does it mean for a man to be faithful? Hallelujah. It means that man is dependable. You see why we sang all the songs that we sang? Hallelujah. To be faithful means that you are dependable. You are reliable. Another word. Um, you really cannot use that word for God, but in a general sense, you are predictable. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Can someone read it from Amplified? A loud reader. I like the way Amplified puts it. Amplified. Hold on. Let's take it one by one. It said God is faithful. Alright. Reliable. Trustworthy. And therefore ever true to his promise. Hold on. It said God is faithful. Reliable. What does he mean reliable? You can rely on him. Trustworthy. He can be trusted. He said, and therefore, on account of these attributes, he's ever true to his word. God is faithful. All right? Finish it up. And he can be depended on. By him, you were called into partnership, companionship, koinonia, and participation with his son, Jesus Christ. Let me explain this scripture to you. Listen. The Bible says we have been called into what? Partnership. Participation with the Spirit. Are you following me now? 
What does that mean? We have been called to be partakers of his nature, of his royalty, of his dominion, of everything that Christ is. And all that he represents. The Bible says Christ is the express image of God. And the Bible says God has called us. Are you following me now? But God knew that that statement would be too big for many believers to believe. And he said, before I say that, God is faithful. He was about to make a dangerous statement. He said, God, it, it was enough. It would have still made sense to just say, God has called us. Are you following me now? Are, are you getting me? Why did he say God is faithful? There is a little revelation there that if we neglect we will never understand the power of what Paul was attempting to communicate. God is dependable. God is reliable. When he says a thing, he means it. He's not playing games with you. He's not playing pranks. He's not just trying to play hide and seek. He said, God is faithful. Hallelujah. Faithfulness is the attribute of God that many people do not know. We know him as being the Holy One, we know him as being the righteous one but we do not know and let me tell you the foundation of true christian faith is hinged upon the revelation of the faithfulness of god can god be trusted can god be depended upon many of us look at our government and we say we don't trust this government again what does that mean they have failed you is that correct so can god the first question tonight is can god be trusted does he qualify to be trusted are you following me now does he qualify is there any litmus test is there any basis that we can use to judge and conclude that god is truly faithful hallelujah because when we know that god is faithful then we will esteem every word that comes from him. Are you seeing? Doubt is, doubt is simply, I'm telling you, it's a byproduct of lack of the knowledge of the faithfulness of God. He called Abraham. He said, Abraham, come out. I hope you understand that Abraham was not the first to be called. The covenant was supposed to be with his father, Terah. And he missed it and died and God called Abraham. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. The Bible says that God called Abraham. He said, Abraham, come out of your father's house, every tribe, every tongue, and go to a land that I will show you. Hold on. Did he tell him the name of the land? He said, go to where? A land, not the land. Go to a land. How can you ask a man to leave his house? A matured man. Abraham was not a teenager. Are you following me now? A matured man. Imagine Abraham packing his things with all his servants. Abraham, where are you going? A land. How intelligent does that sound? We are examining the faithfulness of God so that we can build our faith upon that faithfulness. And he told Abraham, he said, if you will obey me, and can take me by my word this is what i will do to you i will bless you i will multiply you i will bless them that bless you i will curse them that curse you in this shall all the families of the earth be blessed abraham was just listening to hebrew and was just looking you mean god you will do this and he said follow me to where are you following me now and abraham began to move without any knowledge of where he was going to hallelujah total dependence on god and the bible makes us to understand that at a certain time he complained to god that he did not have a child and god told him that he was going to give him a son and that his the inhabitants that will come from him will be like the sons of the seashore. When he shared it with his wife, his wife said, okay, I've had you. Stupid man. At this age of your life, after suffering like this, you are supposed to bring words of comfort. You are now saying, God is saying, we'll carry our child. Hmm. Paul said, God 
is faithful. Are you following me now? Can I tell you something? The faithfulness of every man is hinged upon his ability. Are you listening to me? As, as much as I love you, come. As much as I love you, if I promise you that all through koinonia service, I will carry you today. You see that? I'm going to break that promise. Why? Because my word is not commensurate to my ability. I may not have that strength. Are you following me now? God weighs his ability and the vastness of all that he has and tells you that I have too much resources in me to validate no matter what challenge comes. He said, I am still God and I can fish out infinite ways to cause my word to be manifested in your life. God is faithful. Do you know how many times, listen to me, do you know how many times God made a dangerous statement in the garden. He said the seed of the woman shall what? Bruise the head of the serpent. Watch the drama that happens from Genesis until the Gospels. Do you know how many times Satan almost intercepted the manifestation of the seed of the woman? But the faithfulness of God backing that word ensured that Jesus was born. Some people had to die for God to be faithful. Some people had to be relocated. God moved beyond a man's spiritual life because he was faithful. Joseph, wake up. Take this child and run away. They're about to kill him. The Bible says God is faithful. Hallelujah. He ties his reputation to his faithfulness. And so, there are certain things that when God does, it's really not because of you. Do you understand? God is under obligation it's not pride there is no other God so if he fails who else will you trust do you understand there is no other God that's why I sang that song unchangeable God he said God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son if I look at you right now and I tell you tomorrow by 5 p.m. Um, I will organize a little meeting for you, 20 people, and it will be a breakfast meeting. What happens? You must know me and unconsciously weigh my ability and calculate 20 people. If everybody is going to eat 500 naira, 20 times 5 is what? 500 times 10,000. I say, can this guy afford 10,000? When you weigh me, you say, truly, I believe. I follow me now. If I look at you and say tomorrow by this time, you are going to enter a home at three. You say hallelujah. Are you following me now? So listen, I need you to understand that when God makes a statement about your life, he doesn't make the statement and runs back to his throne and checks if he has the resources to back what he's saying. Are you following me now? See, when the first creation, according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, when the first creation went away, God had the ability to still speak everything back. Do you know something? God is so mighty. There is nothing called past. There is nothing called present. There is nothing called future. There is nothing called time in his presence. There is nothing called disadvantage. God can make a woman to give birth without a man. God can make a man to give birth without a woman. It's just that it's not necessary. Occasion has not created it. Are you listening to me? God can make stones. He say, if you will not praise me, I'm showing you the attributes of God. God is faithful, dependable. So, before God will make a statement, he will first look at himself and ask himself, can I defend what I'm about to speak? And God looks and says, Abraham, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. He said, you can take me for my word. Watch and see. And Abraham, it looked like nothing will happen. Suddenly, Isaac comes into the scene. And Abraham is humbled. Sarah is humbled. And everybody says, truly, God is faithful. And now God says, Abraham, let me see how much you trust me. Take now thy son, that son that came on account of my faithfulness, 
and offer him upon a mount that I will show you. A mount again. A mount again. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and carried Isaac. Why? Because his faith was hinged upon the faithfulness of God. The Bible shares his contemplations with us in the book of Romans chapter 4. How that Abraham believed that God was able to raise Isaac from the dead. He said, God, you are so faithful. I don't know what to tell my wife after I murder my child. But you are going to guide me as I explain to her. In any case, I will obey you. Are you following me now? And he took Isaac. And when God saw that Abraham could give Isaac, he said, Abraham, wait. Suddenly from nowhere, a ram was tied. The horn was inside, you know, it was just tied. The ram could not run anywhere. Where the ram came from, where the tree came from that tied him this is a mystery that we we'll ask God when we get to heaven God is faithful hallelujah the faithfulness of God he swore unto Abraham and told him that his people will be in the land of captivity and after a while a period of 400 years they will go out although it was delayed God is faithful Moses goes to Pharaoh and says Pharaoh let my people go. And Pharaoh laughs. He said, which God sent you now? We have so many. There's the God for son. There's one for children. There's one for our farm. There's one for fruitfulness. Which of them? And that's why Moses said, God, you better clarify. Who are you? I don't want to embarrass myself before Pharaoh. Who are you? And he said, I am that I am. Listen, he wasn't answering Moses yet. He said, I am. He said, Moses, it looks like you do not know me. I know there are many gods and it's easy to join me in all of those classes. But I give you a name that none of them have. I am that I am. I am whatever you can conceive in your mind. Let your mind grow wild. It will still not stretch a glimpse of all that I can be. He said, Moses, on account of this revelation, I am. Go. So when Moses threw his staff, Pharaoh laughed. That's a discouraging laugh. When you move to your enemy, is supposed to be crying. When your enemy laughs, it will challenge your faith. And Pharaoh said, Ah, now wow, Moses, this has been our system. When he threw, if Moses did not know the faithfulness of God, the logical thing to do is to run away, run back to the burning bush. But he laughed. I am is faithful. He can become something. There is still a method. There is a in him. It's a new dimension of wisdom that you have not seen. And God said, hold on. Let me show you my faithfulness. Suddenly, a snake didn't expand, didn't increase in size, swallowed the other snakes and became a rod again. And Moses held it. I control matter and time. God is faithful. Are you following me now? We are examining. I want to challenge your faith. Because many of us have faith in God. But we do not know what attribute of God should be the foundation. Faith in what? The holiness of God? Or faith in the righteousness of God? So when we say we have faith in God, that's a vague, it's like saying I'm studying science. You must know which attribute of God your faith lies upon. Hallelujah. And Pharaoh said, see, you don't know me. These people will not go. And God said, really, you are challenging my faithfulness. In other words, Pharaoh, so you want to prove that I am a liar. He said, this is a contest you want to try with me. All right, let's go ahead. And at a point, he understood the significance of the firstborn. And God stroked all of the firstborns. And Pharaoh said, wow, I give up. I now know that there is one higher than me. He said, Moses, pack all your people quick. He said, the Bible said they spoiled. He said, to show you I am faithful, you will not just leave Egypt, you will spoil the Egyptians. These were people who would not even give them straw, but now give them gold, silver, cattle. And Pharaoh confessed. He said, please pray for me as you are going. Hallelujah. Now he left. The people were happy. They were all singing, truly God is faithful. Suddenly Pharaoh said, I... His ego was stung. He said, lie, lie, I'm following them. And he saddled his chariots and was running. And the faithful one, I can imagine God looking from his throne and saying, man, man, when will you learn? Man, 
Pharaoh, you were a baby. I was responsible for your development. When have you started challenging my faithfulness? And he said, for this, I will so show my faithfulness. And the nation of Israel, they were all afraid. And Moses got to a place, you see, when you are leading people and you get to a crossroad, <laughs> ask God for direction. The same people who were jumping now now met Moses and said, Moses, don't get us annoyed. We were happy with our garlic and cucumber and all. You have brought us to die. And Moses said something. In Exodus 14, he said, stand still. He said, I may in myself, I'm paraphrasing now, not know what to do to you, but God is faithful. Before is a Red Sea. I hope you understand that even if that Red Sea divides, all you are going to see is, is a deep gully. Are you following me now? So it's not like the water parted and then they saw ground like this. The water was, it was a Red Sea. Red means danger. It was a Red Sea. Hallelujah. And the faithful one who watches over his word to perform it was just watching. And he told Moses, when Moses went to him, Moses quickly comforted the people and ran to God and said, God, now look at what you have brought me into. And God said, Moses. See, there is a dimension of faithfulness of God that when you have seen, he becomes more strict in his dealings with you. There are some things he expects from you on account of the knowledge of his faithfulness. He said, Moses, you mean after all you have seen, you are still coming to ask me questions. Ask the people to move forward. How would you like to do that? I'm sure Moses was not the strongest person in Israel here. Yeah. And even if he was, leading two point something million people, you better be careful. They will crush you and disintegrate your bones. And Moses comes to the people and says, O nation of Israel, hear ye the word of the Lord. Move. Now, Bible history tells us the water did not part. Don't think the water just parted. That's what many of us want. The water parts and you say, Oh, thou faithful one. He said, God asked me to tell you move. Bible history said they started literally, they started walking into the water. Yes, yes, they walked and the water got to a point suddenly, the Bible says Psalms that with the breath of his nostrils. He said, let me show you how faithful I am. And the sea parted and the ground lifted and the sea became walls. Water standing hanging in space he said god is faithful the faithfulness of god when the, i wonder what was going through their minds when they were passing let's hurry up oh, before this thing comes down i mean how did it happen in the first place that's how god gives you a blessing and you are afraid of it because you think something bad will happen god is faithful oh he can be dependable am i blessing you tonight is faithful and guess what to make a caricature out of Pharaoh they were on chariots are you following me now so logically and these were the best of chariots they ran it was a long sea so while the Israelites were going the Egyptians were into the sea too are you following me now I'm sure everybody just looking at the sun and say will you hurry up I'll be this water will just cover us here my friend hurry up everybody driving their goats and their cattle and everything are you following me now? And the Bible says the faithful one suddenly made the tires. Because the Bible said they were walking on dry ground. So there was no mud. Suddenly from nowhere, the one who holds matter and time and space started walking upon their tires. And they could not understand. And when Moses crossed, God told him, Moya, cover the sea. faithful the revelation of the faithfulness of God will kill doubt forever in your life are you following me now you see why God got angry every time the nation of Israel doubted his words because he told them he said now all of you are growing older make sure 
you will gather the children and teach them this thing. Let them know all of these my attributes because there are still more miracles to be done and there are still you, more challenges women. to face. And they will need to Hallelujah. draw from the archives of what I have and done. Then he the said father. everything and the angel began. He said, make sure you ponder them. what kind That's of That's why every time God this. does a great thing, they build a monument. And then he began to tell her how that she was going to conceive. Asked, why are we doing she, she, she Why are we celebrating the How shall this thing Why are we doing things that I do not know? What and the angel looked at her he could understand with her truly he because there was a level of the knowledge of God she did not know is that correct and so he took out time to explain to her he said this is the mystery the today. Holy Spirit will overshadow you and then that child that which will be conceived of you at the time Moses Holy died but when Zechariah Joshua was now next in command he was hallelujah so God sent an angel and he came Zechariah was a priest he was a priest anointed to function he had seen the faithfulness of God on many fronts. Are you following me now? And when the angel appeared to him and told him that his wife, Elizabeth, was going to bear a son, Zechariah started asking all kinds of questions. And Gabriel said, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. He said, this guy you are anointed. This your mouth is conflicting what God wants to do. And if we don't do something about it, you are going to corrupt the manifestation of John who will forerun the coming of Christ. Therefore, be deaf, be dumb. And that's what happened to him hallelujah so that he would not interrupt the things that god was going to be doing when john was born the bible says they asked him they said what is the name of the child he wrote john his mouth opened nobody prayed for him no hands were laid upon him the moment he confirmed that it's true i've been quiet for months better this john open my mouth for me hallelujah I have learned something about God in my little life. God is greatly encouraged with a man who can take him by his word. That when God speaks to you, the trouble is whenever God speaks to us, the first thing is we begin to calculate mathematically how it will be done. So God says, I will bless you. Say, ah, Uncle Rav, Japan, I will call you. And you go and check his number. You check your daughter. You insult everybody in your house till you find it. Later you are breathing. And you just said, Uncle Rav, good day. Is it day or night in Japan? Is that what God told you? The Bible says, I mean, God, God spoke to you that he would bless you. You see, faith must not lean on any other auxiliary substance. Many of us want our faith to stand. You are standing, but let me wage it with something in case God does nonsense for me. It's because, we're, <laughs> it's because we are not sure. Hallelujah. We are not sure. Have you ever tried to plan something? I say, let's do plan B. Because the way I'm perceiving this thing, we, we are not ready to be embarrassed. We are going to this restaurant. I sense in my spirit, two restaurants that we have seen, we usually eat, they are closed this one may be closed i follow me now and so that lack of confidence it brings doubt but when you are absolutely sure when you are absolutely sure look at me there is a paper in this bible two of us just answer there's a paper in this bible two of us now the answer is it's impossible to say how true it is do you understand because it is left it is not except by discernment you cannot know whether you have never opened my bible to see it are you following me now let me try to find one paper okay i found one i want you to get this concept can you see a paper everybody can you see a paper is there a paper in this bible are you sure what if you are lying what if you are lying what if from the time i was closing it wind pushed it and some scientific forces of nature just came and something happened you know radio waves just came things are happening these days what if there is nothing how many of you can pledge everything in your bank account to prove that there is a paper in this bible ah, i mentioned bank accounts some of you refuse have our believers it's part of the story this is not real life now it's part of the explanation <laughs> hallelujah my dear please stand up 
is there a paper in this bible are you confident what should we do to you if we check again and we don't find it? are you following me now many of you are laughing but you're not getting the point i'm trying to put are you seeing now the first time i asked you the question many of you are saying yes no yes no but there was something that suddenly happened to you that did what there was a revelation when i opened it and it brought a degree of confidence that nobody look at all of the points i started bringing are you following me now the reason why we doubt god and we doubt his ways is because there is a revelation of his faithfulness we are yet to comprehend this is why he left us the testament of the word that when we read through we will see god is saying did i fail anybody read i put my character to test check it from genesis to revelations do you not see that all those who trusted me smiled at the end the bible says who through faith in that faithfulness men subdued the mouth of lions daniel abraham moses isaac elijah all kinds of people in the days of hezekiah the bible makes us understand that the king set themselves to I mean they wrote a letter threatening hezekiah he took it to god and he cried and the bible says god gave them a strategy the same god told them he said this is going to be how it you will arrange the armies the worshipers will lead the way and then you will just sing and dance what kind of army is that if the nigerian soldiers with what is going on in this country you saw these people with trumpet not guns trumpet there are there are police people standing outside here imagine if you came in and saw them just holding trumpets and say we're going to have beautiful praise tonight but that's what happened the strategy of god and the bible says suddenly enemies began to fight themselves they killed these people and when they finished they killed themselves yes they had to kill themselves who killed the last person hallelujah are you following me now say after me god is faithful when a man throws his cv and says go through it i give you the power to scrutinize me if you find anything faulty with my nature bring it to my notice this is what god did this is why everybody has access to a bible are you following me now he said there's nothing to hide go through it on your own beyond your man of god and god gave other people wisdom to transcribe it into greek and hebrew and king james he said use every english you can some bibles are in your language now are you following me now he says so that you will have no excuse i want the entire world to scrutinize my faithfulness and if at any point anyone finds out that i was not faithful let me know and i will cease to be god hallelujah and so paul is speaking to the people and he says guys i'm about to give you a revelation but like many other patriarchs of old when god talks like this they don't understand so he said god is faithful so whatever i'm about to tell you you should know that god is not playing about it he said god is faithful by who you were called into fellowship participation oneness that means he called you into his victory he called you into his wisdom he called you into his power he called you into his favor he called you into his authority he called you into his realm now is god playing is god just cracking some jokes close to the end time when the time is about to finish one day we we'll just see god's face from heaven <laughs> you say i've been laughing from the time i created man i've been playing i've been playing stop reading the bible you think god is in that business you know the way listen the way many believers treat god sometimes we we think god is a joker because we are used to unfaithful people are you following me now and so we look at God and we say, God is one of these people, Jare. God says, I will bless you. And he says, God, don't insult me. I didn't ask you to talk to me. You mustn't talk. The Bible says, God is faithful. That means he's too serious to be playing with you. Are you following me? If he ever allowed your eyes to see anything in the world, take it seriously. He is not playing. Are you listening to me? when he says your years will be like that of a tree god is faithful so for every scripture you read you say god is faithful 
He says you have been called. The righteousness of God. Is God joking? God is faithful. A drunkard holds his bottle of stout. He has not even finished it. And someone preached. And he drank. And, and I mean, as a person is preaching, he's drinking. And the Holy Spirit touches the person and he becomes born again. And the Bible says he's a brand new creation as if he has never seen again. God, are you lying or you are serious? What's the answer? God is faithful. He's dependable. He's trustworthy. He's too serious to be playing with you. So if the Bible says we have been raised up with Christ and we have been made to sit together in heavenly places far above principalities, far above rulers every throne dominion and every name that is named brothers and sisters i ask you a question tonight is god playing is he joking is he playing pranks is he just trying to cajole you to encourage you to continue this journey of faith when god says you will call on one man and a nation will run to you is he telling the truth when he says arise and shine for your light is come that means he has equipped you with all the tools to arise god does not speak to people without making preparations if god looks at you let me tell you how god talks god can look at you and say um he doesn't talk as if you are supposed to have a need this is the interesting thing about god god will look at you and say um deborah go to un and tell the secretary general that I'm not happy with him. That's how God talks. And then he, he leaves you with many, he, he scatters your mind and removes everything that can make you doubt him. God, what, how, who will pay the flight? Who will pay? God just said, go. Whenever he speaks, let me tell you, the moment God is speaking, there are other things happening. The moment he's speaking, if God looks at you and says, Mr. Man, I am sending you to the president the moment he's saying that the spirit is making all of the arrangements are you following me now for in his word is life in his word is power whenever God speaks the same word that you are hearing is the same word that is making every preparation God is faithful his word is pregnant with all of the resources that will make it become whatever he has pronounced upon you. Hallelujah. And hear what God says. Jesus speaking to Satan. He says, if you are truly the son of God, turn these stones into bread. What did he say? He said, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that is uttered by that faithful God that whenever God speaks to you he is committed and he is faithful to bring it to pass let me tell you something God will never tell you what is possible with you except he's not God he dwells in a complicated realm called eternity even if God says, I will bless you, the way he will say it, you will need faith to always believe God. Are you following me now? That's the proof that is God. You will always need faith to believe God. Because everything he says will challenge you. Lazarus, her brother, is sick. He said, that sickness is not unto death. Let's continue doing our business. And then at a point by himself, he said, our brother sleepeth. He said, Lazarus is dead. Let's go and wake him. Chai was excited about it. Would you like to follow a man like that? I've shared with you my story, right? Not a nice experience. Better make sure you hear God before going to any mortuary. Hallelujah. For those of you who have not been, uh, I shared the story of how I went to the mortuary to raise the dead. Three days. Those of you who are medical doctors will laugh at me a bit, right? I went there, I stood there, looked, I said, which of the bodies? There were plenty of bodies. After I prayed once, twice, three times, the guy didn't wake up. I told him, I said, people, get me out of this place. <laughs> get me out of this place. Hallelujah. 
Let me show you something. Sorry, I'll be using you. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. Malachi chapter 3. After tonight's meeting, many of you will not see any reason to doubt God again in your life. Malachi chapter 3. Verse 6. Yeah. Let's read it together. He said, I am the Lord. I what? I change it not. That means when it comes to my faithfulness, I am highly predictable. Are you following me now? I am highly predictable when it comes to my faithfulness. You can stake your life at it. He said, I change it not. I change it not. Now, that does not mean his methods do not change. He's talking about his nature, his character. And according to Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, I believe, turn there, Revelation 19, verse 11, you will find out that that word faithful is not just an attribute of him, it's his name, it's his identity. Revelation 19, am I correct, verse 11? Yes. Let's read it. One to read. Was called what? Faithful and true. Faithful and true. He said he was called. It's his name. It's his identity. He cannot separate himself from faithfulness. Hallelujah. So when God speaks to you, God is faithful. That he is dependable. You can take him by his word. You can trust him. Can I tell you something? All of the generals of old who shook cities, brought territories to a standstill, every one of them had nothing but the word of God. And they took that word and challenged systems they took that word many of them traveled from their countries to another country at the word hallelujah Sondia Delaja left Nigeria and went to Ukraine at the word of God God called him and God told him he was going to cause a revival and shake Ukraine was God faithful God is faithful and a man entered flight. What is taking you to Ukraine? God said, ah. God said, and he led a revolution and changed the face of Ukraine till today and forever. Great man at the word of God. A great man called Pat Robertson, 700 Club. Hallelujah. Was a businessman, God told him, come, I want to use you. You know what is called 700 Club? 700, that word 700 was the little group they wanted to raise. Those who would partner the little TV ministry when it was going to start. God spoke to him. And he went at the word of God and the faithfulness of God. Many years later, he sin today. TBN. Am I challenging somebody? TBN. Paul and Jim Crouch. You know how they started? They just had some money and felt God was leading them to do a TV program. So they bought a little slot of time. About one hour. And when they aired it, you know how they finished. They say, if you like this program, send comments, send mails to us. And they were surprised at the mails that came. And the people said, please go again, go again. We'll sponsor it. That little thing today has become what the prophet saw. He says, son of man, what seest thou? He says, the flying scroll. The power of media and technology in advancing the gospel. TBN today is the largest TV station in the whole world. Reaching millions and billions with the gospel. 
because one man chose to take God's faithfulness and rest his faith upon it. I want to ask you a question. What is your faith resting upon? Many of us, our faith is resting upon the words of men. A man of God spoke to you. Now, I'm not against believing the God of Joshua, God of music director. I'm not against it, okay? But when you idolize it and say, Oh, God of Koenonia, answer me. You will only be fortunate if the God of Koenonia is the true God. If paradventure is not the true God, whoever is the God who answer you. Hallelujah. My faith is hinged upon the faithfulness of God. I'm saying this because if we are going to take the systems and take the kingdoms of this world, God is going to be committing dangerous words and instructions upon us that will be bigger than us, bigger than every, bigger than your family put together. And God will expect you to know that he is faithful. God will send you to a house where someone has been on crutches for years and God will say, go and lift the person up. You have been praying in tongues. Oh God, we are going to the nations. Now, you stand before that house and you stroll as if you don't know that's the gate. And you are coming and God is saying, enter, I sent you. See, the next time you read the Bible, put yourself there. Put yourself there. You are faithful, so faithful in your ways. You are dependable, so dependable in your ways. You are glorious, so glorious in your ways. God is faithful. Listen, listen to me. There is no one greater than him. He's not one of the many gods. Are you listening to me? He's not one of those gods. He's not a little higher than Satan. A competition was not taken and God came first. He's the only one. He's not first. He's the only one. If God is first, then he's not powerful enough because that means with time, somebody can overtake him. He's called Almighty. He took all the power by himself. Are you listening to me? God is not first position among all the gods. They had a relay and everybody ran. Buddha ran, everybody ran and then God just grabbed them. He just put his head and he said, yes, Jesus, no. No, no. He sits in a class all by himself. When he began to speak to Job, he was asking Job certain questions that only God can answer. Hallelujah. Say, so where were you when the morning stars gathered themselves together? Where were you at the foundations of the earth? Who was there? The psalmist began to speak by the Spirit, talking about when God was founding the earth. Everybody in the earth today, no matter how arrogant and stubborn, came and found something. You found people, you found land, you found a God at work. Nobody began anything. So the one who began all things says he is faithful. Let me tell you something. No antichrist and Satan will wrap up this age. I hear people say Satan quickly. The end time is not coming because of Satan. God began the time. He will close the chapter by himself. If God does not close that chapter, even if they bomb every city, he will not come. He will sit quietly on his throne and be looking. Men can preach anything they want to preach and scare people. God will say, I'm watching are you listening to me? God has never been bothered upon his throne at the, maybe an insufficiency of his ability to see the catastrophe happening to man. And he says, hey, hey, hey my word is being threatened. There is only one thing that frustrates the manifestation of the word of God. What do you think the answer is? Man. Man. This is why God is meticulous about you. Satan cannot stop the plan of God. The question is when God speaks to you, if you do not align and believe him and take his word, you cripple him, although he is almighty. 
the bible says in psalm 78 he said they limited god in the wilderness so a man can limit god he said they limited god by saying can god make a table in the wilderness when they got to the wilderness they said Toh. at least in egypt we used to sit down on the ground and it looks like a dining table now we are in this place with heat in in the afternoon cold in the night oh god can you feed us and god said hey man he said let me show you something suddenly manna would fall and quails would fall and he said something he said let me show you how mighty i am there will be excess but don't care about it don't save anything another one will come tomorrow god is faithful i know my god is faithful oh i have doubted him so many times how many times have we doubted him how do you feel when people doubt your word imagine you told somebody you are going to cook for the person and later you come and you see that the person has gathered maybe he hid food in his in his jacket and as he's saying ah you have come suddenly he falls out yeah say sorry i didn't mean it i i thought the rain the rain was falling and i thought you would not get back god is faithful do you believe that god can make you what he has said do you believe god can transform you do you believe god can anoint you is he is he just playing games or does he mean it god took frail people like us and said guys can i use you do you believe you say lord don't know whether we're you see the man that said help my unbelief people laugh at him that guy was a very wise man he was absolutely intelligent the same thing the, the prophet said he said can these bones live it's better to ask god for mercy than to question his faithfulness when the next time god speaks to you and you are not sure just say mercy find songs about mercy just find songs and say lord your mercy see many of you don't know how you don't know how to get your way around God. When you understand the principles of God, David knew God. Ha! David knew how to get God. He would sin and do everything. And then he would come. He would dance and dance and dance. And God would be looking on his throne. And suddenly God would respond to the praises. And David would say, oh God. He said, am I not a sinner and you not a holy one? When a man has condemned himself, what will you tell him again? David was a smart man. Many of us don't know. We don't know. There was nothing David wanted that he would not get from God. At a point, God said, who is this man? He said, I have found my servant, David. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. He said, David is a man after my heart. Whenever there was trouble, David knew what to do. The moment the ark there was trouble with the ark. David knew what to do. They will move small, they will offer sacrifice. Move small, offer sacrifice. Whenever God is about to get angry, they will offer sacrifice. That's how the ark reached her. David. Listen, we need Davids in our time. Men who every time you see a situation, you just say, I know. God is faithful. Because he's faithful, he has implicated himself. You just lock yourself somewhere and start dancing. People say this rent, if it's not paid tomorrow, you are out. You are not crying. Say, God, He is faithful. I know Him. The faithfulness of God is an advantage to the believer. That whatever principle He has left in the world, you can take advantage. The Bible makes us understand that a certain king, sorry, you soon go and see that. A certain king in the Bible, I cannot remember exactly where. The the nation of Israel alongside another nation ran and they wanted to catch that king and the Bible makes us to understand that that king, it was obvious the king was going to die you know what the king did he carried his first son the one who would succeed him and slayed the son the moment he did that the nation of Israel could not move again because God stopped moving God said hey who is this that understands the principle of making me first if you kill the person who will succeed you you have killed your future i said there's no point don't destroy him again hallelujah solomon when god said son what will i give you i know many of us say, ah god sit down first <laughs> sit down you will not stand to and sit down the bible says you sit and laugh so sit down 
I'm about to make you laugh. Get a notebook. And we will list and list. And say, ah, I forgot my brother. Oh, Lord, add him. I forgot this, add him. But look at what Solomon said. When God gave him the opportunity, he said, Lord, thank you. He said, Lord, you have brought these great people. They are your people. You see that? Your people. He committed God's jealousy because he said they are his people. He said, Lord, am I able, you have now put me to succeed, my father. You put me, recognizing his authority. He said, God, am I able to help these people? Just give me an understanding heart. He knew that God is so faithful. He will never just, he will give you more than what you have asked for. So he said, God, let me let you do the giving by yourself. Because I will be foolish and my big mouth will limit me. So say it by yourself. And he left God. It's powerful to let God choose his blessing on you. Because he will, he will, he will beat whatever it is that you would have planned. And he said, an understanding heart. And God said, ah, ah, you didn't ask for the life of your enemy or this. He said, I will give you riches. I will give you honor. I will give you all of these things. Say after me, God is faithful. The faithfulness of God means all the principles he has put in the world work. All of them. So if you are tithing and you tithe with the mindset that God is faithful, then you know that it's not just church trying to eat your money. Are you following me now? You know that God is faithful. He said, I will rebuke the devourer. Is he joking? Is he joking? So on account of his faithfulness, you commit him. Are you listening to me? If someone comes to you and says there is a shortcut, there is a shorter way of becoming, and you know that's, that's what Satan does? When Satan knows that there is no, you must arrive where God has sent you, you say, all right, let's negotiate. Let's reduce the journey. Since it's obvious that you'll get there, that's what he told Jesus. He said, just bow to me. I know that the whole thing is to collect these keys. Let me Kukuma give you. Bow to me. The Bible says, as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. Are you listening to me? So every time you are trusting God and you are going through what people call the birth pains of delivery. The faithfulness of God will sustain you through that process. Men may laugh at you. Say you are always calling on God. You are, you are always shouting, fanatic, praying, talking nonsense. You will see who will marry you. Sit down there. You are talking about God. The other time we called you for party, you are doing your antisocial. I pray. Let a Pope come and marry you. Suddenly you two will begin to ask yourself, am I being stupid? Remember, God is faithful. Your father was there when they were signing the contract. And they told him, they said, oh God, add two zeros quickly. Add two zeros. You know how much will be your own. And when the right hand wanted to sign, God said, uh-uh, that's not my ways. One billion would have entered your account and you clean your mouth, nobody will know. And your father said, okay, God has promised he will bless me. I will not sign it. Oh, yeah, walk out of the office, let's do our thing. Walk out, we will still sign it in any way. And the people signed it and became billionaires. And your father is there. He cannot even afford a golf. And many people look at you and say, Now you are your father and your stupid Christianity. What is the response? God is faithful. Can God bless a man on account of integrity and faithfulness? Can you place your faith upon him? You didn't cheat. Your colleague was even healthy. I can help you. I can give you question three, question five. I don't know one very well, but at least I can help you with half. That's C already. And you would have done it quietly. You were sitting at the back. It was evening. There was no light. The sun was casting this way. You would have done your thing quietly. The lecturer called you and said, just compromise and we'll give you C. If you compromise well, upper credit or B. And you refused. And it looks like you are losing out. I'm preaching to people who look like they are losing out because they are trusting God. I bring you a message. God is faithful. The faithfulness of God is what commits him to abide by his principles. Are you listening to me? It has not failed anyone. It will not fail you. God is too mighty to start failing from your generation. And so I know that God will not fail me because he is faithful. Hallelujah. 
Are you listening to me? So let every doubt tonight fly away from your life because you know God is faithful. Tonight, after this meeting, you will call certain people who are about to give up even in your family and tell them, Hey, God is faithful. Don't give up yet. Your father, I say, we shall go to the Babala. Oh, let's just go. Whatever he tells us, we ask God. But let's go and see him. God is faithful. Your mother has been sick 12 years. Maybe mad or something. There's nothing they have not done. You have prayed. You have prophesied. Another neighbor went to Babala and the woman came back fine. She's still fine today. Your mother is still sick. They say, I won't you go. It's just herbs. You will not do anything. Herbs. God is faithful. When a believer goes through any challenge on account of trusting God, I want you to stand tall and say, my God is faithful. I shared with the ministers yesterday a vision that I had. About three or four days, I was just lying down and suddenly I saw a vision. It was like cloud. It was about to rain and suddenly I saw a writing he said, the one who sent you will never leave you. That was the statement. The one who sent you will never leave you. Friends, Koinonia today is founded upon the faithfulness of God. Do you understand? Everything we do is founded upon the faithfulness of God. Your life Many of us have been disappointed because we have been trusting men. I've said you trust your teacher, you trust your, your nephew, you trust whoever. Would you say, Lord, I rest in your confidence. I've trusted my father and he didn't send allowance. I said, I trust this, I trust that. God is faithful. I bring you a strong message tonight. God is faithful. The faithfulness of God should give you confidence that whatever principle you are engaging, many of you may be praying, God will wake you and say, pray. There are spiritual um, hosts of wickedness trying to contend in your family. And the more you are praying, the more it's like nothing is happening. You are praying and then in the middle of the prayer, they call you and say, ah! And you know, the people can validate, they can try to partner with Satan to prove that God is of it. Hey! Say, what is it? Say, I can't even say it. No, don't talk. Say this is serious. And now you are you suddenly your faith turns to foolishness. You have been praying for hours, you are sweating. Now you look like an idiot in your prayer altar. You are just saying, Should I continue or stop? God, what are you saying? I bring you a message tonight. God is faithful. Let your faith lean upon the faithfulness of God. That whatever God has shown you about your life and about your family. I need you to know you are not the first person to trust God. He left a testament to show you all the people that trusted him. Abraham, David. You have not gone through half of what they went through. Many of them went through life and death situations that required minutes. The widow, remember the widow who was broke and they were about, they were about to carry her children. And she said, Lord, she went to the prophet and said, you know my husband walked diligently before God. This is an emergency. Something bad. See, if his recession, it didn't start today. In the land of Samaria, recession was so bad to a point that women were eating their children. Is it? Have we gotten to that point in Nigeria? No, sir. So what are we shouting about? As if There is nothing new under the sun. Is it death? Is it sickness? Is it financial hardship? God leaves the Bible for you to scrutinize and say, see this. When you truly study scripture, your conclusion will be God is faithful. Whatever excuse or disadvantage, you say, if my father was around, if my mother was around, if my brother didn't die, my elder brother, he just left home, he got missing for 20 years, we have not seen him. And he's the only one who went to school. Now there's nobody to help us. And the Bible says, can a woman forget her suckling child? God is faithful. I bring you a powerful word tonight. 
challenging every doubt in your heart that this takeover generation that God is raising are men and women who will master the art of leaning upon his faithfulness that you know that God is faithful because friends let me tell you something challenges will come in this life that will attempt to shake your faith and the only anchor that you will have is the faithfulness of God Job was so confident about God when his wife said see this embarrassment is too much you know when other people talk to you and your wife has not spoken you still have solace but when your wife speaks you know that the issue has gone bad and Job said why do you speak like one of these foolish women he said though he slay me yet will I praise him Job said I know I know I'm not trying to know I know that my redeemer live it he didn't die a day before my captivity started I know that my redeemer liveth. what is God not able to raise back to life in your life what is God not able to change he created the heavens and the earth in seven days how many days if you calculate it mathematically how long will it take him to change your life there are six billion people on earth they have not exhausted a i mean a sizable portion of the landmass on earth and god created that landmass in seven days thank god you went to school calculate it how long will it take god to change your life one moment an entire land called samaria they are eating their children the next day they are in abundance. If God says that thing will happen in Nigeria, 99%, including all of us, the anointed men, will not believe it. That God says, by this time tomorrow, or my next week, he said, next week, Koinonia, everybody in Nigeria will be entitled to 30,000 per month once you are 18 years. It will be a new policy that will be passed and there will be resources for it. The prophet that prophesies that kind of thing in Nigeria, if you ever become that prophet, Jamfa, if by any means you prophesy that, the first thing is you go to prison and then Senate will probe you and then every religious body will probe everything out of you. you but when it happens, you become a hero. You only become a hero at the other side of obedience, the other side of the word of God. When you can believe God, when you trust him hallelujah tonight god gave me a message to shake away every doubt and unbelief in our hearts and to prepare us to know that depending on the faithfulness of god is the secret of triumph in this life every other thing outside of him can fail are you listening to me but there is one who changes he said, I am the Lord, I change it not. There is nothing God tells me that I will doubt him again. I've made up my mind. Every time I sense doubt, like David, I will say, Lord, only thou knowest. It's better to be neutral. Uh, sorry, like, like Ezekiel. He said, can these bones live? You know the thing with God? He will let you see it first. The Bible said they were very dry. If they were not dry, you could give it some medical explanations. Chamu, some medical explanations you would have explained how there are still some cations and anions and under certain circumstances if you can change the pH and do this and take a fraction and culture the cell then you build it back again Bible said they were very dry no hope for anything say can these bones live again the prophet looked say Kai God only thou knowest I refuse to doubt you oh lord i now understand that song um please reduce the key let me sing it be magnified oh lord i have made you too small in my eyes he's not small in his throne he's in his eyes and that's a product of how small we have seen him in the world we are going to sing that song when we get to that part oh lord forgive me make sure you sing it 
And I have believed in a lie. What is the lie? That you are unable to help me. But now, oh Lord, I see my wrong. This is the prayer tonight. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. And in my heart, and with my song, oh Lord, be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. Let's sing the stanza again, everybody. I have made you too small in my eyes. Oh Lord, come on, pray from your heart. Forgive me. And I have believed in a lie That you are unable to help me But tonight from this message But now, oh Lord, I see my wrong Heal my heart and show yourself strong and in my heart and with my song oh lord be mad oh lord when did you start calling yourself a failure when did you suddenly admit the language of satan and you started calling yourself a failure when did you start calling yourself a defeated fool when did you start calling yourself a powerless christian when did you lose out and give up on god when did you suddenly start trusting in men to say, God, you have failed me. Nigeria is where we are today because we do not believe God. Nigeria is in the Bible, Isaiah 18. There is a prophecy about this great nation. It wasn't just Lord Lugar that brought about Nigeria. We came as a definite product of prophecy. Let me ask you a question. Do you still believe that God is able? Do you still believe that God is faithful? Can God give your sister that child after 10 years? Is he still faithful? Or has he lost his power? Can your brother or your sister still get a job? Your family is suffering on account of righteousness. Can God step in? You are not married today because you have rejected every man who has come in the name of Satan. Is God still faithful? You would have been on first class right now if you were kept compromising from 100 level. And people have laughed at you and you are afraid I will not get a job. We have made you too small in our eyes. Oh Lord. Forgive us. And we have believed in a lie That you are unable to help us hey. But now, oh Lord, we see our wrong Heal our heart and show yourself strong and in our hearts and with this song tonight oh lord be magnified oh lord i bring you a message of hope where you are filled go back again god is faithful god is faithful 
God is faithful. I'm speaking to the spirits of men tonight. God is faithful. You stop praying because you thought your prayer was not generating energy. That there is no difference between you and a believer. I speak to you tonight. God is faithful. God is faithful. God spoke to you that by the middle of the year, there are certain blessings that he would have brought to your life. Right now you are in the second week of May. There is no iota of it. God is still faithful. God told you there is a level of grace. A level of insight and intimacy you will be walking in. Until now you have not seen it. God is faithful. Many people call you and say where is your God? I bring you a message tonight. God is faithful. Now is not the time to give up. There's a song. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on for the change is coming. I won't give up, Lord. I won't give up. No, no, no. No, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on till my answer comes. I won't give up. I prophesy to you. God is faithful until for the last time now I won't give up this is my confession Lord I will not give up on you you are faithful till the answer comes till the vision comes to pass you spoke to me by these two immutable things God cannot lie God cannot lie. Let's sing it one more time. I won't give up, Lord. No, no, no. I won't give up. I keep holding on till my answer comes. It will come. Though the vision tarries, though the word tarries, though the prophecy tarries, it will come. It will come. One more time. I won't give up, Lord. No, no, no. I bring you a message of faith. A message of hope tonight. God is faithful. I won't give up, Lord. No, no, no. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So no matter what happens, in the midst of the sickness, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of every challenge, you sing like Don Muen. Lord, you seem so far away, a million miles on what it seems today. And though I haven't lost my faith, generals who are weary, but tonight the commander in chief is rising faith from his army. But I don't know what to say, and I don't know where. Let hope rise tonight. That's the language of faith. With all that's in my heart. I would sing, I would pray, even in my darkest hour, through the sorrow, through the pain, through the sickness, through the disappointment, I will sing and I will pray, my God is faithful, for your word is true, come on sing, I will sing, I will sing. I will pray. I will pray. It doesn't matter the
the darkness through the sorrow through the pain through the lack through the tears we lift our hands to honor you that last part he says I lift my hands to honor you because your word is true. sing it again I lift my hands to honor you through the pain although you are crying but you cry with your hands lifted you cry but you are saying God you are faithful I've not seen the result I have been praying I have been fasting but I know God is faithful. I lift my hands. I will cry with my hands lifted. Come on, confess unto God. I lift my hands to honor you. So I will cry, but with my hands lifted up. Every time a general lifts his hand, the war is not over. For though he slay me, yet will I rise again. He said, though the vision tarries, though the vision tarries, can you rise up on your feet and say, Lord, I honor you through the disappointments. I honor you through the pain. I honor you through the tears. I honor you through the lack. I honor you. I have not seen the miracle, but I honor you. I refuse to complain. I honor you. Come on, prophesy. Lord, I honor you. I honor you. I honor you. I honor you. You are faithful. You are faithful. The finance will come. The lifting will come. The glory will come. The grace will come. My story will change. This is not the end of it. I lift my hands and I honor you. Come on, pray. I lift my hands. I honor you. With tears in my eyes, I still honor you. For God is faithful. Let your faith lean upon the faithfulness of God. By these two immutable things, it is impossible. Pray in the Spirit. Generate faith. The vision will come to pass. Yes, you are the Savior in your family. It is not a lie. You are the one. The word is still true. Yes, you will be that prophet. You will be that apostle. You will be that teacher. It does not look like it. Your ministry will flourish. Yes, your business will flourish. Yes, your spiritual life will flourish. Exalted high above the worship of the people of the earth. I see the Lord. He's exalted. I see above every the Lord. doubt. Above every fear tonight. The 
Lord gave me a prophetic word for you. Please turn to Exodus. My God is faithful. Verse 9. Hallelujah. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them encamping by the sea. The Bible says the Egyptians pursued them. He said and overtook them. Surrounded by trouble all over but God spoke didn't he speak can I tell you something look at me the fact that God spoke to you does not exempt you from challenges are you listening to me victory the victorious life is not the life without challenges the victorious life is the life that conquers every challenge. For when you serve God, you will get to a point in your life where challenges become your daily bread. And if your faith does not stand upon the faithfulness of God, then you might not last. Are you listening to me? And his army and overtook them encamping by the sea. Verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew near, what happened? The children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were in what? They were in what? They were in great fear. There are times in your life where situations will surround you, surround your family. Nobody is working in your family, from your father to your mother to everybody to you. There are times that these Egyptians come and surround us. And at that point, even you will begin to doubt the integrity of God's word. But let's read on. Oh, I have a prophecy for you tonight. The children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were in great fear. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. 11. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves. Look at me. How many of you have ever wished that God didn't take you to the point you are now? Have you ever got to that point where you say, Lord, I wish you. Why did you anoint me? I was minding myself. The power of God hit me. I didn't ask for it. Look at the trouble you have caused me now. I follow me. You pray in tongues in your house, they call you a witch. Better stop that. Where did you get that from? Now you are in trouble. Everybody doesn't like you in your neighborhood. And you say, Lord, was I doing bad without praying in tongues? Was I going to miss heaven? Why did you add this complication to my life? This is exactly what the Israelites, the same people who were dancing and say, thank you, Jesus. There is a way situations can overwhelm you that you ask some questions that by the time you come out, you feel foolish that you ask those questions. You will never believe that it's you that can ask that question. Oh God, why me? Why did you give me this stupid father? The same man you say I love with all my heart, now he has become a stupid father because of the heat of the challenges that are upon you. Your father will look at your mother and say you are such a did I really marry you what happened to me ha ah, after 30 years and when the whole situation pipes down he can look at you and say I didn't mean it there was no school fees the Egyptian said were there no graves in Egypt look at Moses Moses innocently came to deliver them now he's suffering from it for it to die in the wilderness wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us from Egypt 
is not this the word that we tell thee in Egypt saying let us alone that we may serve who look at the people who are talking God's covenant people but let's read verse 13 powerful and Moses said unto the people fear not tell your neighbor fear not say fear not can I tell you something look up every challenge you face in your life is not as bad as it initially looks Satan has mastered the art of magnifying challenges and he says God spoke to you he said three days now it's two weeks as if it's 20 years and he will magnify it he will convert the hours to seconds and make it look far and say is God not unfaithful and you say yes but Moses lifted unto the people and he said fear not stand still and see the salvation soteria the healing the deliverance the blessing the breakthrough that the lord will bring he said for the egyptians this is my prophecy that god said i should speak to you he said for the egyptians that ye see today ye shall see them again no more no that's not the end of it don't say amen yet there is one last word here forever let me tell you something there are certain things you are going through right now in your life is called a phase of life when you break through you will never return there again forever oh yes there is such a thing as that he said these Egyptians that you see these ones you are, you are seeing them look at them very well because the only thing you have about them is the memories. God will wipe them and clean them from your life. The Lord will fight for you. Verse 14. The Lord will fight for you. He said, and you will hold your peace. You have tried fighting and fighting. Now the Lord. There is a reason why he is called the Lord. The Lord himself is rising up to fight for you. When God fights for you, you will win. No? You must win. You will win for sure. The Lord is about to rise up and fight for many people, many families, many of us in this place because we trust Him. He said, I, the Lord, I change it not. The Lord told me to tell you that these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. He said, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Egyptians of sickness, Egyptians of failure, Egyptians of bondage, all kinds of Egyptians. The Lord is saying that these Egyptians you see today, that the Lord himself will arise. Let me tell you, there are a few times in the Bible where God has revealed himself as a man of war. And for every time he reveals himself as a man of war, I want you to know that the defeat will be utter because he will finish it and sign his signature as the mighty one on it. I don't know about you, but I believe the Lord and I believe his word. We are going to pray right now. Two prayer points. Hallelujah. Two prayer points. The first prayer point is we are going to say, Lord, I have faith in you. I know you are faithful. I kill doubt and fear. Everything that has made me to doubt your word and to doubt your promises. Whatever it is that has turned faith into foolishness in my heart. I pray, let there be a restoration of the faith of the Son of God. He said, contend for the faith that was once delivered unto you. Contend for the faith. Go ahead and pray. God is faithful. Lord, I contend for the faith. I believe you. I trust you. You will not fail me. Pray. Say, God, you are dependable. My supervisor will not frustrate me. You are dependable. Pray. You are
are dependable. I will not keep living from hand to mouth forever. I know you will change my story. I depend on you. I depend on you. I will grow to become a general and you will use me for your glory. Hallelujah. 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 The next prayer point. We are going to pray and you are going to say, Lord, give me a personal revelation of your faithfulness. You have had a teaching here, but you are going to say, Lord, do something between me and you that will convince me beyond every shadow of doubt that you are a faithful God. Activate my spirit. Quicken me by the agency of the Holy Ghost. Do something in my spirit, man, oh God. That I will not believe you today and doubt you tomorrow. That I will not trust you on Monday and doubt you on Tuesday. Grant unto me by revelation and understanding. Pray that I will comprehend. That I will comprehend. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I am convinced. That God is faithful in the name of Jesus I look away from every limitation from every doubt and every fear and I fix my gaze on Jesus Jesus I know you will not fail me you are faithful and you will prove yourself in my life I know my change will come. Jesus gave a parable and said there was a man that went to seek help from his neighbor. Paraphrasing. And the neighbor for a long time would not attend to him. And the Bible says that man kept persisting. Persisting. And though the man would not talk to him, but for his importunity he kept drumming him in other words i'm not going back the woman kept going to the judge i meant to say avenge me avenge me my adversary and then he would not listen to her the bible says he neither feared god nor man but that woman said i may not have the power to beat you but i have the power to force you to move and she demonstrated persistence and the bible says she wearied that unrighteous judge until he moved on her behalf i spoke about diligence last week and it's a very powerful key there is a way you stand and insist that lord what is mine must enter my hand i've seen it in my dreams i've seen it in my visions but lord i agree with you that it must be in my life. Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, if your faith says yes, God will not say no. So we are here tonight, among other things, not just to pray for the sick alone, not just to deliver the oppressed alone, but to trust God to take away every barrier that is capable of stopping you from testifying and seeing the goodness of God in your life. Listen, the theology of oppression is very straightforward. It's very simple. God has an agenda. Completion. Satan has an agenda. His agenda is to stop whatever will make God happy. Period. His agenda is not to cause you pain. His agenda is not to make you broke. Listen, his agenda is not to make you sick. His agenda is not to make you fail. That's not Satan's agenda. His agenda is to make sure he becomes a resistance 
to whatever in and through your life will bring God glory. That's it. So if it takes crippling your destiny for your life to become a mockery to God, Satan will go to any length to make it happen. So if Satan makes you broke, it is not about finance. If all you are looking at is finance, you are, you are making a mistake. It's not your finances. He wants to use your life as a message to say, God, you are a liar. So his assignment is to find everything God said concerning your life that he tied his integrity to and use your life like a canvas to paint a picture because you are the highest of his creation. Are we together now? So if Satan ensures that this man and his wife don't give birth, it's not about barrenness. You see, if all you see is, oh God, when are we going to have a child? It's not about barrenness. There is something that your giving birth to a child will do to the name of the Lord within your territory. And that's what Satan is fighting. When Elizabeth was barren, it was not about her. It was about John the Baptist who will ordain Jesus, who will save the world, who will bring glory to the Father. It wasn't about Elizabeth. She was just a scapegoat because she came into the midst of prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are some of you, the devil is fighting your breakthrough because he knows that that gate and that door has never been opened in your family. And he knows you are too kind to receive the blessing of the Lord and allow your loved ones cry. So he would do anything. He has already seen your heart and he will make sure it doesn't get to your hand. I have learned from the word of God and by experience that Satan is not looking for many things. Satan is looking for anything that can give God glory. Whatever can give God glory is a threat to Satan. I think you should write that down. Anything that in and through your life can give God glory is a big threat to Satan more than you know. Your job can be a threat to Satan if it will give God glory. Your business can be a threat to Satan if it will give God glory. Your prosperity can be a threat to Satan if it would give God glory. Your having children can be a threat to Satan. And that's what he's looking for. So why should the devil allow God give you a car when he knows that with that car you will no longer come to church alone? You want to buy a bus and he had your prayer when you were vowing and said, Lord, bless me with this bus and I will make sure this bus is full every Sunday. And the devil says, oh, I had that. If you said, Lord, buy me a bus to prove to the people in my village I'm not a failure, he doesn't mind because all that doesn't bring glory to God. Let me tell you, not everything threatens Satan. I can tell you what threatens Satan. The moment he sees your heart saying, Lord, my life and anything that will pass through this life will give you glory. It may look simple, but you have said something to Satan that is more painful than praying in tongues. That my life, <sighs> Lord, bring these millions for me. And Lord, if you bring these millions for me, I have 11 siblings along my family line. That have not gone to school. And Lord I know that if you put this in my hand. I will make sure all of them go to school. And I will make sure they go to mission schools. And Satan says uh -huh. the school was not the issue. The mission. Mission Abi, And that's it. An attack that you did not invite comes to your life. And you'll be wondering what is happening to my business. It's not the business. There is an agenda. You have connected your business to God's heart. And Satan says that's a threat. Remembers in the Bible, Satan killed children. He didn't wait till they grew. If he killed children, he will kill visions even before they manifest. He doesn't have to wait till you get the first contract. He doesn't have to wait till you start the church. He's seeing you in the secret place praying and say, Lord, you know I desire this healing anointing, not just for myself. In this entire territory, the men of God are wonderful, but it's just evangelism here. 
there's no demonstration of the power of God Lord I come to you if it pleases you can you grant that through my hands ah the devil sees what you are saying if you said Lord anoint me because my uncle said something that I will never be a success and I need to prove to him it will not threaten the devil but the moment Satan is looking for the kingdom component of your prayer the kingdom component of your communication anything you say and do if satan can find the heart of god in it he's threatened lord i thank you lord you know that is it's not like i don't like men lord i, I want to be able to to marry somebody that loves you it's, my, it's always been my privilege to serve you serve you i want my children to call upon your name the devil had that one too he didn't hear lord i worship you he didn't hear lord i thank you for this day he had my children will worship you and satan says no way make sure make sure that this lady wherever her marriage is bury it to nonsense give her money give her a job because she has not made any statement about god being glorified in the job so she can have the job but the one that god will be glorified through that's the one i'm interested in are we together and then when satan hears you pray prayers like lord take my everything the devil says demons you can go i'm staying here take my everything <laughs> There is a reason why satan attacks he does not attack you because of you listen god is comforting us already because there are many of us wondering what is all this lord what is this i will see something almost getting to me what is the thing why why is satan taking my case personal there is a reason the reason is not you don't be fooled it's not you the reason is something you represent something that is of god through you satan has seen that by God's preordination, your womb is supposed to carry one of the prophets that will herald God's end time agenda. And he says, whatever, make her marry wrong or make her not get married or make her get married to somebody who has the cause of barrenness. Just do whatever you can do to clamp this lady. Oh God, my father is 71. They are still staying in a rented house lord would you open a door for me and as you do this lord you see my heart i will renovate all the churches in our village i will sponsor this i will buy a bus and satan says buy a bus for nonsense renovate which church all of a sudden you find out that the business that everybody likes you suddenly your business partner starts saying i don't understand you again it's not the business partner my brother a commitment from you has touched the heart of god and it sounded an alarm to the gates of darkness you see when you when when you understand how and why satan attacks then you will know why the power of god will continue to come around your life until victory is complete mm. one day I can't remember where I was driving to sometimes I just drive in the night alone and sometimes I just move and then I parked somewhere around that market side and I was looking at someone just passing and the Lord was telling me something about that guy and the Lord was telling me that guy going I just saw the guy just moving and he said that guy the devil has rubbish that guy true story and that in this guy's destiny he was supposed to be the first preacher in his entire lineage and I saw the boy moving with all these this rough and scattered boys around. And I was just looking. I said, my God. If your life does not have a message that gives God glory, you will beg Satan to come. He will run. Satan, a demon, goes to a wilderness. And because there's nothing in that wilderness that has God's assignment the demon casts itself out of the wilderness back to a human being that God can use remember Jesus said when a spirit leaves a man it goes to a wilderness he didn't find anything in that wilderness that is pro God and he left it back 
said i want the man because god can still use him i can tell you why satan is threatened by everything around you your worship does something to him your commitment does something to him when satan comes and sees our little children hearing the word of the lord he says what can i do to this family to stop them from coming for koinonia and the easiest way is can i cripple their finances because if there is no money there's no food to eat there's no transport and if there's no transport there will be argument between daddy and mommy you see that wise plan all of a sudden you find out that something that would have worked does not work again and he steps back and allows you to blame yourself and while the children are suffering they say sorry it's time for koinonia i say koinonia what and the devil said that's it mission accomplished it was never about money that's why a lot of people say why is it that unbelievers who don't love god they are getting rich what in their life threatens satan it's not about I mean, look if you think it's about money and tea and bread and cars no sir satan was willing to give it to jesus he said jesus why go the long route just bow to me i will give you this meaning if satan if jesus bowed to satan all of a sudden even caesar will be dethroned and jesus could go and sit down and satan doesn't mind provided you are my boy enjoy everything you never the devil will never allow you to hold the hands of god and hold the hands of the blessing he will say choose one hold the blessing and leave god or hold god and leave the blessing the miracle service says you can hold both that's why we're here tonight yes sir that you can say i can still serve god and pay my sibling school fees because of the blessing of the lord i can still serve god and i don't need to go and collect any charm yet i will prophesy to nonsense and cast out any demon you see that listen you are here tonight i'm announcing to you very straight up what we are here for we're not here to waste our time we're here to stand in agreement with god i have seen how people in ignorance allow the devil to make nonsense out of their lives choose between raising a godly family or not getting married choose between being a very wealthy man or a pastor hello choose between being the first graduate from your village or being a popular musician anything that you can use to give god glory is what satan is looking for he will find you he will haunt you and if you do not understand the systems of the kingdom he will make sure that he makes nonsense out of your life and listen the moment he sees that your health and vitality and energy has been committed unto god he will now find a particular disease and program it across your lineage not you if you have headache that means it may just be that you need you just need some time to rest satan is too wicked to just give you a headache satan wants to program something you heard that dear lady cancer in um the grandmother just like faith can be transferred so you program it in a way that a young lady is just 35 36 and all of a sudden she's feeling what is this ah mama died of cancer now i'm having cancer tomorrow another person has cancer those people don't need healing they need deliverance it looks like it's healing ask jesus woman thou art loose first when you are loose then he laid hands on her he said now you, your body can participate but the real thing is the bondage in the spirit are we together now yes anything you see in your family that is not only you that is suffering you need to stand for them today oh. 
If you are the only one having it, it may just be your not understanding, your this and that, but provided you are not the only one. No. Your grandmother was raped by a stupid man. Your mother was raped by a stupid man. You, you were raped by a stupid man. Must you wait until your daughter is raped? You stand up and say, in the name of Jesus, someone paid your grandmother's dowry and ran away. They paid your mother's dowry and ran away. Now somebody is wanting to pay your dowry and, and run away. You stand and say, Lord, this must end. Look, let me tell you, nothing changes until men get angry enough to say, Lord, it must stop. Are we together? Yes, it must stop. How about finances? Look at me. There are some of you here, I don't mean to insult you and I don't mean to embarrass you, but let me tell you the truth. Until God does something to your hand, money will never stay in your hand i'm not talking about money you can be as intelligent as whatever i'm telling you it takes more than a good transaction to keep this thing because money like a human being has a spirit a soul and a body the spirit of money is mammon or the holy spirit there has to be a controlling factor the soul of money is the the, the intellectual system that brings the exchange, the body of money, is the physical thing you are holding. So if all you are holding is just the physical thing, you are a joker. There is a spirit that can call what is in your hand and it will leave you. It's true. So the devil sees that this family wants to call upon the name of the Lord and makes sure that everybody remains poor. Can I tell you this? And I don't mean to insult you, but more than 60% of the people seated here, your major prayer point, corporately as a family, is, oh God, let your heavens be open so that your supplies can come. There may be other things, but you will prefer supplies a thousand times than your leg that is paining you to be, to be fine. There is an agenda. I've shared with you my vision. I will continue to share it. Years ago, I was praying. I think I was, uh, I can't remember what was happening. And then my, my ceiling just disappeared. I didn't see a building again. And the next thing I looked and I saw a giant creature. Mighty creature. The eyes as big as the head of a man. And then it was, it looked like a dinosaur. But the tail had its own life. Meaning you could disconnect the tail from the body and it would still be in existence. And it was just fuming with red eyes looking at me. And saying, so you think you can bring God's people into abundance. That was the end. That was when I agreed that prosperity is spiritual. If all you have is a contract, you are joking. If all you have is a shop, well done, but you are in trouble. If all you have is a good business, you heard the testimony of this dear um, wonderful man that came from Koza that just shared here now. Estates and everything just given. No. It's not just a man that gave him. There is a spirit behind it. You need to be empowered to fail. I hope you know that when you are failing consistently, there is an anointing making that happen. An anointing is simply an empowerment. Everybody hates you. You are supposed to bless me. As soon as I come, you hate me. I now go here and I'm too late. It's not normal. When the coincidences are too accurate, there is a spirit making it happen. Someone calls you and says, please come. Let me give you something to pay the rent of your family. The moment that statement happens, the devil makes sure that the man receives a call that is an emergency call are you seeing that now and he leaves the office you arrive the office you find out the door is locked he says if the young man comes just give him two thousand to go back it's a lie the man did not leave something happened there is a spirit behind that operation how many of you have gone to to seek people over something that is so simple maybe just a signature and it will take two weeks three weeks you believe it's normal 
And then sometimes a man of God may pray for you and speak. And you go back and the person who should not be there in the afternoon is now there. He was not there. An angel kept him there. This is how this kingdom operates. Your destiny helper, the destiny helper of your family can be two blocks away from you. But because there is no spiritual connection, my brother and my sister, you can stay 15 years. Whereas the person ordained by God to lift you is just two blocks. You will go to America and return back like a thief. You will go to UK and return back like somebody that God hates. But the day God decides to locate you, you will be surprised. Is God speaking to us? That's why we are here tonight. You can be a man of God and like the gentleman who listened to discerning the body. Probably God has been telling you, look, your ministry will never grow until you receive a word of impartation and prophecy. But you'll be surprised how you'll be planning for five years. I will come for koinonia. You will now say next week. You will say, Kai, uh, ah, I'm feeling cold. Let me just relax. As soon as you want to travel, your sister will just say, ah, I just came on break. Let me tell you, all those acting is a lie. But there's something about the will of man. The day you stamp your feet and say, today, I name today as my day of breakthrough. The Bible said today if you hear his voice, every day becomes your today until the day your faith says no tomorrow again. It has to be today. Are we together? So tonight, I don't want you to sit down and waste your time. You are hearing people testify. My brothers and my sisters, I tell you by the grace of God, there is enough grace and power to turn your life to bring any it's not very difficult no it's just your connection stop the arguments the war that is happening in your head can god do this you can't leave lagos leave the east leave the north and come and sit down you are wondering you believe that god brought you to waste your time no sir no sir i tell you in a moment in a twinkling of an eye oh can can the hepatitis go can this go we're talking god here we're not talking the the chief consultant of a, a, a hospital the god of heaven can that yoke go we are nine people in our family apostle nobody has a job it's not about the job the devil has seen that in the job of those nine people is the bread of maybe 30 children those nine people the money from those nine people who empower a church to preach and save somebody who will become a mighty man and for the sake of that mighty man those nine people will remain poor it's not about the family hallelujah if satan had his way he will kill me crumble this ministry make every koinonia message around the world to disappear all of a sudden in everybody's phone if you can do that you can beat his chest and say i've tried ah but there's a song that says satan shame unto you you know the song don't sing it oh <laughs> we make our boast in the lord in the next few minutes we are going to so rubbish the devil in this place let me tell you first of october We'll let, we'll let the devil know what is in Nigeria. He has tasted what is in America, what is in Russia, what is in this. And then you see your life change. A miracle is a wonder. That, that the limit. Oh, hold his hands. Try to stop him. Two of you. You know that game they used to play? That like you try. Oh, yeah. Do it now. Yeah. Don't, no, don't, don't draw him too much. Sorry. You are not very kind. now watch this are you seeing that now this guy can be growing old every year you are celebrating birthday and nothing is moving in your life because there is a devil somewhere determined to make sure you don't rise let me tell you my assignment this is me now coming into this equation my my assignment is not to cut what is there my assignment is to carry this like this this one 
Because you see, I can cut what is there and pass. You can enjoy breakthrough while you are about to go. He's going to hold you and say, come back. Apostle has gone. So the, the job has not been done. My assignment by the grace of God is to carry this mountain you are seeing and carry it out of the way. One, that's number one. That's not all. Then my assignment is to turn you to the direction. That's where prophecy is powerful. And then turn what would have come to you from that delay. If I leave you like this, you are not oppressed, but you, are, you still don't have breakthrough. You are free from oppression, but you have not entered your inheritance. So you can't testify. But whatever that is, when it comes to you and you go to it, and then I leave you, my job is to... And, and the thing is that all these things happen through words. The word that is sent to supervise and make sure you get to your inheritance. And then by next week, you are coming with an employment letter and you are on your knees saying, God, what is this? What is this? Then two weeks later, five people, all barren in your family, are saying, ah, I, I, I think I'm pregnant. Then you just remember, ah, what has happened? A man of God that you have space for 500 people in your church and yet you see 10 people, 15. During a convention, they grow to 30. By the time service is finishing, there's 20 back. And all of a sudden, something happens. And one spectacular miracle happens by the next Sunday. In a way that even the critics say, I'm here in your church today to watch what happened. And you said, I never believed I would buy canopy for an overflow. But the anointing. God brought you here to change your life. Listen to me. I repeat, God brought you here to change your life. He didn't bring you to just be happy that a program koinonia. No. This is a miracle service. A miracle service is not a teaching service. I will take out time and teach you, but this is a miracle service. There are some of you, you may not be sick, you may not be oppressed, but you need to carry something that ends every argument. Result, my brothers and my sisters, is the end of every argument. I can lie to you. Or you can deceive me that you are having a pocket square. And I can argue because I'm not seeing it. But if you bring out a pocket square and I see it, this is the end of the argument. It would be stupid to still argue. At that point, you will let everybody know you are a madman. This is the result. Could it be that you have been talking too much? Let the anointing talk. I, I, will, I will build the house. I know God is faithful. I will do this. And God is saying, no. Moses only spoke small. And then the rod kept talking. You have been talking forever. Some of you, you are here in this meeting because there is a rod that God will give you. You stood before the Red Sea for forever. It refused to part. But God brought you here to carry something that you go back with it and it will shock you, my brothers and my sisters, that that Red Sea will part and you will call your family and say, finally, we've been wondering how to build a bridge, but we found an easier road that the river can part. Tonight, I want you to know that God wants to do this, number one, because he loves you. But number two, there is a dimension of glory only your result can bring to him. Don't ever let anyone fool you. Hearing is our father glorified. John 15 and verse 8. This is how I am glorified. Galatians chapter 1 verse 29 says, And they glorified God in me. Not that they glorified God on the throne. They looked at my life. They saw that God can do this. You, no father, no mother. Who gave you the job? Who did you know from the top? You're a man of God. I used to know your father as a wheelbarrow pusher. And you say, my brother, it's what God can do. If it is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous. Now, eyes. For as long as your life is ordinary, your ministry is ordinary, your business is ordinary 
you will continue to explain and explain and argue and explain and explain and explain let me tell you God takes away shame from our lives by giving us results did you hear what I said God does not take away shame by explaining anything to anybody he does something in your life and he does it in a way like Julius Berger will build a house and put B God will do it and put his signature they'll say no this business cannot be human I hear testimonies of people every time the things that God does in and through their lives a wonder please let your heart be open no oh. don't let the devil make you come here and waste your time whether you are outside overflow one overflow two overflow three online whatever nation you are following just listen I believe him I may not claim I know everything about him but this God when God decides to stand up from his throne he said now arise from your throne God can stand up have you heard that the earth is his footstool so when he decides to stand up and say who has made the cry of my daughter to continue coming the Bible says even the mountains keep like lambs my God is mighty our own belief many times is the reason why God does not move we come and sit down and pile up some of you have come with all kinds of forms and pictures and that's wonderful but you are there wondering can you move oh God concerning my money can you move concerning my money can you move concerning my health can you move concerning my wife and God is saying yes I can I am willing and I'm able and then the devil comes very quickly and says if God could move did the man of God pray for you in by March didn't your pastor fast seven days for you and you say it's true oh, that's the devil tonight your faith must be open your faith must rise to the heavens to say Lord I don't want to leave this place just knowing I'm blessed I want to know what happened to me I want to hold a substance God is speaking to someone here this this sharing the grace and say ah were you blessed oh my God miracle service was powerful that's not a blessing oh you can hold on to something and know that i left this place what happened the pain is gone i left this place what happened that before the grace is shared you check your phone and all of a sudden a text that you have been waiting for for five years now that's an evidence this is what we are talking about all of a sudden you are sitting down while you are seeing me preach you have been trusting god for that prophetic grace and while the preaching is going all of a sudden your eyes are open you are saying so this is what apostle is saying and you are seeing the power of god touching somebody and then you hear me say there's someone here and you are saying my god i've gotten this elisha knew when he got it elisha knew when he got it he went to the sea where is the lord god of elijah and the river parted you are trusting god for the grace for revelation that before the meeting is over all of a sudden scriptures it's as if it's an injection from your spirit you are just connecting one revelation to this and you're saying, I, I can't remember studying this and then you discern that something is happening something is happening that heaviness has gone where is the fear yesterday night i couldn't sleep the fear of death is gone listen philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 says that the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in christ if you don't expect it and you don't pay attention to it if i ask this gentleman to give me water i'm expectant i'm not expecting a handkerchief i'm expecting water anything i see that looks like water is attracting my attention a double-minded man let that man not think he will receive anything from god thank god for people falling and flying up and down but your eyes is stayed like a flint lord i left lagos this morning and i came here 
I left Bielsa and I came here. My car almost had an accident. Lord, I would have been in a convention now as a man of God. I left it to be here. I'm looking for something. Let something come from heaven. And your hunger is like a force that is drawing something from heaven. And all of a sudden, boom, I tell you, in one minute, I remember many years ago when I was standing in the rain at Bonke Crusade, there were crowds of people like this. I didn't know what who wore, whether you wore red or green or blue. My eyes were fixed. Lord, what did you give this man that made every nation to open to him? What kind of man is this that no one criticizes him? Abba. I didn't just go there to receive anointing for miracles alone. No. When it came, I knew that I got it. I knew that I got it. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, you can know that the load has been lifted. You can know that the prayer has been answered. You can know that the project is a done deal. Are we together? The grace is here. More than available for you. And whilst we begin to pray, don't just watch others receive. Be sensitive. You are the one who knows what you are here for. Are we together? In one minute, I'd like you to open your mouth and cry. Mention specifically, why are you here? Talk to the Lord. Please pray. Please pray. Pray with all your heart. Lord, I had a young man testify that you gave him properties. I had a young lady, born, had never smelled. She was not in a miracle service, just listening to a message. And all of a sudden, the healing power of God touches that lady and that's it. Lord, I'm tired of this lump. Lord, I'm tired of this medical report. I'm tired of watching my mother cry, my father cry. I'm tired of my ministry not growing. I'm tired of staying at a particular level in the anointing. Lord, I've heard testimonies of favor. I have an idea of what happens when a man is carrying favor. But Lord, I don't see it yet in my life. I'm here tonight for this one reason. Lord, even after the deliverance series, I've been seeing certain things happen in my life and my family. That pre-informs me that I will still need a second touch. A second touch over my family. My loved ones are not born again. Lord, I can't watch them go to hell like this. Don't be tired of praying. Please cry from the depth of your heart. Lord, I'm not going back with this disease. I'm not going back with this medical report. No way. No way. No way. I insist. I'm not going back barren. Tired of miscarriages. Three, 
creator of the universe what can you do what can you do jesus you're the name above every other name what can you change what can you change jesus one more time creator creator of the universe what can you do what can you do jesus i want you to see the lord lifting your burden you're the name above every other name what can you change what can you change jesus you are able great and mighty god you are able I will continue to read it for you. Isaiah chapter 61. Please give it to us. The messianic prophecy. Jesus' own manifesto. He's saying, this is what I came to do. Isaiah 61. It says, the spirit of the Lord. We are reading from verse 1 to 4. Is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Start looking for your own as I'm reading. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound, verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those that mourn. Three. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beautiful ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified for. And they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair waste cities, he says. The desolations of many generations. I'd like you to pray. Whatever needs to be fixed in your life and family, insist that tonight is the night when it will happen. Overflow one, pray. Overflow two. Overflow three, by the roadside. Those following from around the world, open up your heart and pray from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord just showed me something like a train. You know, a speed train, not like we have it now. Just like a train, just passed like this. And I believe in my spirit that that is a typology of a grace for speed. Listen. We are going to pray now. And 
like I always say, you find out when I pray, you're going to see people running around in and out. Please just guide them and bring them out. Ushers, whether you are an usher or not, the ushers can only do so much. I want to pray. Once I pray that prayer, listen, please, I don't want you to get, listen, please, hold on. I don't want, it, the idea is not about people falling down, carrying them. Please, let your spirit be open. Be open for when your word will come. Be open for when God will visit and locate you. That, that's, that's what you're here for. So I want to pray that prayer now. I'm seeing a lot of those people at overflow one a lot of the people who will be affected by this prayer are in overflow one the overflow outside you see let me tell you this when a man listen when a man does not have speed in his life you don't have the entire lifetime to do all that you should do it it takes more than just power right Please help those in Overflow 1, my God. I'm seeing very strange angelic activities happening already at Overflow 1 outside. Now, listen. When there is no speed in your life, listen. Imagine that I have to walk from here to maybe the roadside and I'm tiptoeing on one leg. Am I moving? Yes, sir. But when will you arrive there? The pressure that you will mount on this leg, it will affect you to a point that you may not even stand it. And so God, when he wanted Elijah to move, because he had already been delayed, the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He was empowered of the spirit and he ran. I, I, I'm, I'm saying this before I pray so that you don't just think it's about anointing and people running around. No. When that grace comes upon you, what God is saying is, I'm ready to shift you. That within a short time, you will see a lot happen in your life. In three days, the work of redemption was done. Three days. This powerful redemption did not happen in 12 years. It happened in three days. By the end of three days, Jesus had ascended, poured his blood, returned back. He was ready. He was now to launch the church. Big things don't have to take plenty time. When the hand of God comes upon you, you will see that a defining moment in your life can happen so fast. Are you ready now? Lift your hands. I want to pray. I will do the praying. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is asking me to shout Jesus, not you now. I'm the one shouting Jesus. I'm going to shout it and at the third time, I tell you it's going to be an avalanche of the power of God. Let me have those people out. Lord, you are bringing speed to your people. And I know that there are angels all around. It's time to change people's levels. And even as you have instructed me, oh God, as I declare that name that is above every other name, I pray that anyone under the sound of my voice who has been crippled in one position, that in the name of the God of heaven, an anointing will shift that person into his destiny. Jesus, that's number one. Mm. Jesus, that's number two. Get ready now. Shabalakata. Jesus. Let that anointing right now. I shift man. Speed. Kabarakatosha. Speed to your life. Oh God, let every delay be broken now. I command the spirit of delay. Be broken. Speed. I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Help that woman. Please help that mama there. Shakatoka tabarakata. Please help them whether you are an usher or not. speed speed in the name of jesus i command everything that has refused to move in your life i move it by the power of the holy ghost i'm still praying i'm still praying the holy ghost is moving you except this prayer is not for you 
there is an anointing that must shift you must shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost Lord shift them to their destinies please you will need to help the ushers whether you are an usher or not just, just help them there's only so much we can do there's no power that keeps you down this is miracle service Shekete Karakatosh Embrakata Katoka Telakata. Lift your hands, please. I'm praying. For some of you now, it's the same prayer, but it's no longer just for you. You may not be experiencing it, but your family needs speed. The anointing now is moving from individuals to families. Lord, where are the families that need the shift of the Holy Ghost? I decree and declare right now I speak by this apostolic and prophetic grace families be shifted now speed 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 I decree it I declare it I decree it and I declare it no more delay I stretch my hands I'm seeing an angel of the Lord just on this road I stretch my hands right now I move people God is moving people here I decree it I declare I decree I declare I decree I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus it must work for you I shift you no more delay in your life. Shakatos keparakato shekata. This lady wearing hijab right now. The Lord is shifting you. That lady, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Let the anointing of the Spirit take away delay from your life. Right now, in the name of Jesus. now all those in front i'm praying any chain that has tied anyone's leg or any family at the count of three i speak into the realm of the spirit those chains go now one two three go 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 i lose those families now I command chains be broken now let the families be set free in the name of Jesus young lady lift your hands you you put in your hand on your mouth. yes i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on you and the lord is saying that he's shifting things i'm seeing like a chain on your head being broken now i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus let that chain be broken let that chain i command that devil i'm seeing a snake in the spirit let her go now in the name of jesus hallelujah be sensitive i want to pray a very serious prayer now he said behold i give you authority over snakes and scorpions if you don't like the prayer and pray no problem but i want to pray a dangerous prayer i'm seeing snakes this is what i'm seeing over families now let me tell you this reptilian objects is a representation of the spirit of sorcery in the name that is above all names i declare every spirit that has caged any family here i decree and i declare right now by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus and at the count of three 
everyone shout Jesus as you shout Jesus I see fire everywhere inside and outside there is massive deliverance about to happen I command every devil and every activity of sorcery to live now one two three in the name of Jesus I cross Satan I cross his works inside outside I command every power every force go now go now hallelujah please be sensitive just give me the volume i'm seeing fire by my left and right just bring out all the people that fall under the anointing now as i'm walking here in the name of jesus i command that devil you must go now you must go now you must go now i declare it by the anointing of the holy ghost as soon as i come close to you that fire and there is an anointing you can't stand it it's impossible as soon as i come close to you as soon as I come close to you, that fire, there is a judgment. Let them go now. I'm coming this way. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the power of God is coming this area, this direction. Let them go now. Release them. I come by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let them go now. Let them go now. Release them. I'm seeing someone here tied around the stomach. Release them now. Let them go. In the name of Jesus, let them go now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I stretch my hands here. Right now. The fire of God is setting people free now. Lose them. Lose them. Lose them. Lose them, lose them, lose them now. Lose them, lose them in the name of Jesus. Lose them now. Those outside, lift your hands. God is about to set you free. Please, I'd like you to pray. Everyone praying. Enough is enough tonight. Everyone praying. Everyone praying. Now, listen overflow one listen to me listen you don't have to touch me please you don't have to touch me but in the name of jesus hear me the lord brought me out here because the time has come for something to leave someone as soon as i pass here i don't have to come close to you you are going to feel fire all all over that fire that will be the end of it you must testify right now i stretch my hands right right now it's over over now Shakos Katanika, a ghetto Santa Ricata, a preketo Seketa, a Kato Sekriaka, Manta Precotos. Let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go now. The spirit of sorcery, I cause it now. The spirit of witchcraft, I cause it now. Please help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves. Go, go, be free. I command that power by fire by fire by fire it leaves you now those of you here i want you to lift your hands overflow two overflow two lift your hands let me go to the front there enough is enough as i pass this place listen i want you to be very sensitive there is a strong anointing tonight overflow two Please help your neighbors. I'm only going to pass here right there. As soon as I come close to you, except God is not God. If there is any force holding you, holding your life and your ministry, it must go right now. Right now in Jesus' name, be free. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I command those devils, go, 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 go. Let them go, go. Go now, release them, release them, release them. Every covenant, release them. I break that power now, 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 now. Be 
be broken. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, listen. I didn't know we have an extra overflow here. I want to pray for those by the side here. As I stretch my hands to you, please don't waste your time. I'm seeing fire already. Here. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, those of you by the roadside, one, two, let them go by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you. Please help them so they don't injure themselves. I declare, I decree and I declare, you are free. Praise the Lord. Overflow 3, your life is about to change. Listen. Listen. Honestly, there is, there is an anger in my spirit. Because as I entered, I'm just seeing chains everywhere. Right now, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, bring all of them out. From the front to the back. Right now, at the count of three, overflow three, all of you shout Jesus. One, two, three. Every power, bring them out. Every yoke, every force, every operation of darkness, bring them out. I'm seeing chains on people's feet. Chains, chains, chains be broken now. Be broken now, be broken now, be broken now, be broken now. Change, be broken now. Hallelujah. Bring them out. Overflow three, lift your hands and see praying. Listen. I'm seeing, I'm seeing patterns. Something that is not just happening to you alone. Happening to your father, your mother. As soon as I pray now, I'm seeing fire all over this place. Anyone under that case, you must be free now. At the count of three, anyone holding any pattern, any generational thing, in the name that is above all names. At the count of three, one, two, three. Shout Jesus. Bring them out. That devil must let you go today. My God, look at what God is doing in Overflow 3. Look at what God is doing in this place. Hallelujah. Listen to me. The Lord is showing me. I'm coming back. But I don't know why God is, is, is on the case of overflow 3. The Lord is showing me some of you. I'm seeing you are climbing a ladder. But that ladder breaks down and brings you down. You see things as if it's supposed to happen. But a force draws you back. The moment someone wants to lift you, you will have a dream in the night. And in that, in that dream, someone will come to sleep with you. Or something will happen. Right now at the count of three, shout Jesus. I command those devils. One, two, three. Let them go now. Let them go now. Total emancipation. Hallelujah. Jakakos kaparusi kata hasana katushia. Embrekata katos kata brekatish. Now, now, all those who are under the anointing here outside, I pass a decree that every power that has held you. I speak as one send at the count of three let them go one two three go 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 
go let them go lose your hold over their lives let them go now let them go now let them go now hallelujah i'm inside this place now and i'm standing in the spirit i've not started impartation yet but the lord is showing me the number 12 and the lord is saying there are 12 people here there is a strong call upon your life there is a mighty anointing lord where are they drink of that wine a ministry of signs and wonders ministry of signs and wonders a ministry of signs and wonders a ministry of signs and wonders signs and wonders signs and wonders i'm still praying the anointing of the spirit is still locating men i don't know why god is talking about ministry the call don't run away from the call don't run from the call a ministry of signs and wonders the lord is telling someone you are the liberator of your family a ministry of signs 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 there are ladies here entering that ministry of signs and wonders signs and wonders hallelujah main auditorium lift your hands i'm seeing i'm seeing a distribution of the healing anointing going on in the main auditorium and i stretch my hands from here it doesn't matter what overflow you just be sensitive to what god is doing main auditorium i'm seeing eight people eight people in the main auditorium at the count of three right now in the name of jesus fire will come upon your hands i'm prophesying to the main auditorium but everybody can receive i decree and declare that healing anointing one two three let that anointing come now let it come now fresh fire hallelujah listen listen i'm seeing oh my god the lord is opening my eyes here i'm i'm seeing someone don't don't be ashamed and don't be embarrassed your father i don't know if i'm seeing something like a priest this is someone that worships something like an idol is in your house i'm not saying you're a bad person please i'm not saying you're a bad person you grew up seeing this happen that they worship those idols that gentleman is here in overflow three oh, oh, oh yeah please who is that person come i want to break that thing now from your life please quickly please make sure you hear what i say before you come just let make way for them the power of witchcraft young man you're going to be a mighty man of god i don't know you lift your hands an anointing is coming upon you now huh? it will shift you to a realm of signs and wonder or let that anointing come upon him right now in the name of jesus christ Hold my hands, my dear. The power of idols. In the name of Jesus, I break that force now. I break that force now. I break that force now. Testimony of breakthrough for you and for your family. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. hallelujah i'm praying listen i stretch my hands towards you and i speak i don't know what it is that you have been involved in but in jesus name i'm stretching my hands why am i seeing fire leaving my hands who is it looking for 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Shakuske paura katu zeketa, ende keleka toska de brakata, rakas kude po shabahasiya kata, embreketesh. I command everything that is not of God be broken now. The blood be broken now. By the blood be broken now. By the blood be broken now. By the blood be broken now. Hallelujah. Just two more things I'll do here. Whether I'm in this overflow or not, I just stood here to show you that it makes no difference. I know the larger congregation is here. Lift your hands, all of you, if you can. Just lift it as high to the heavens. Now, I'm seeing, you don't have to come out, but I'm seeing keys in the spirit. Listen, this is access to a new dimension. And I'm seeing the number 44. Just lift your hands. You don't need to say anything. Father, I stand as one sent. Those keys are locating families and locating people. It may be a key that explains why things have not been working. Lord, from the front to the back, like a mighty wind, whoever must receive that key, receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let her go now. Out. Out. Now. Now. This lady wearing a red hair tie. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing a grace that is coming. Let that anointing come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let that anointing come upon you. hallelujah overflow three i'm seen by the spirit the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing the names of members of your family like written already written already i'm going to pray listen except god has not sent me as i'm praying some of you instantly the power of god will come upon you and god is going to open your eyes you are going to see victory and deliverance in fact i see a family where three of your siblings they've married none of them has a child none of them at all has a child they've done everything to do but there's no child but i stand in the name of the lord father where are those families right now like a mighty wind like a mighty wind oh god let it end right now let there be an opening let there be an opening let there be an opening in the name that is above all names let there be an opening young lady come call that lady for me call this gentleman too this man yes bring him in the name of jesus you need to be delivered i command the spirit that torments you to go now by the power of the Holy Ghost, I release you. My dear, hold my hands to you. I'm seeing that your life is about to change. Two weeks from now, it will surprise you what the Lord is going to do in your life. I decree and I declare it over your life. I stand by the anointing and I pray for you. Father, according to your word, within two weeks, turn this lady's life around. Supernaturally, in the name of Jesus, Emeka, who is Emeka? Emeka, I'm hearing a name Emeka, overflow three here. I'm just talking to overflow three people. Emeka, Emeka, please quickly, please quickly, don't waste our time. Where is that gentleman? What's your name? I want to pray. What do you do? I'm going to pray for you. You are not from this place, you came for NYSE. I want to pray lift your hands because i'm seeing look at me the lord is giving you the grace for wealth huh i want you to believe it 
but every prosperity that does not have an assignment will end up destroying the people you love jesus with all your heart i want to pray for you it will surprise you the way god will begin to turn things around in your life father change this gentleman's story in the name of jesus forever overflow three i'm still praying the spirit of prophecy is coming on nine people i will count four at the fourth count one two three where are they oh god four nine people nine people the spirit of prophecy the spirit of prophecy all of you open your mouth and begin to pray everything you desire overflow three open your mouth and decree open your mouth and decree i'm seeing an anointing around here who is that person i stretch my hands i'm seeing chains breaking just within this region as i'm standing here father let the chains be broken now the anointing of the spirit find that person let the chains be broken right now right now right now right now right now right now be broken now Hallelujah. please everyone pray everyone pray everyone pray everyone pray hold on there's someone here the lord is saying i'm rolling away your shame i'm seeing light as i was just passing i just saw light two people let the anointing find those people now two people right now i decree overflow two right now in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name i decree and declare by the anointing of the holy ghost shame reproach let it go now shame reproach let it go now shame reproach help them let it go now in the name of jesus christ who is gabriel 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 i'm hearing a name who is gabriel is there someone like that you are wearing a maroon you are wearing like maroon kaftan gabriel maroon kaftan is there someone like that what's your name do i know you lift your hands my brother god is about to change your life god is about to turn your life around uh, where are you coming from I want to pray for you you love Jesus what is is it Oleku or Aleku what is that huh? Huh? where are you from Benway State you are from Benway State this is what has tied down your life and your family I want to pray for you I'm not a herbalist eh? father in the name of Jesus let this gentleman be free right now I command that devil to leave you now just keep him there in the name of Jesus these two people this gentleman you yes and the lady by you come quickly please blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory what do you do my friend you are a student you love Jesus I want to pray for you. Huh? Yes, Are you together? Yes, sir. Because I saw light on you. Husband and wife? Yes, please. Well, I'm not going to discuss your issue now, but two of you need deliverance. Eh? You love Jesus, but you need serious deliverance based on what I'm seeing now. Huh? You are not husband and wife yet, but I'm seeing a lot of stories. Father, in the name of Jesus, look at me. You're going to be very wealthy, but the first thing you need to edit are your friends. Huh? Hear what I'm telling you, huh? My, uh, my sister, you know what I'm saying, right? Huh? So your friends, huh? Confirm, sir. Listen to me. You are not truly born again if your friends don't change. Hear it from me. All this born again that is one leg and you have all kinds of friends. If if I am a drunkard and you are not a drunkard but we are staying together, I'm close to a drunkard. That means I can be implicated by everything a drunkard can be implicated by. Is that true? So, my friend, you love God, eh? But you see, um, look at what I'm doing. One leg in, one leg out. 
huh? don't be embarrassed when i make the altar call you need to run and come quickly jesus is not just some religious thing that you just run to just for no 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 Let, let's take god serious and take him look what i see my friend i see god turning your life in a way that will surprise you but friends and this is not just a message to this gentleman alone it's a message to many of us because the demons that destroy our lives work by bringing wrong friends they make you compromise your values it's not your fault but when they come they are vocal about what they believe and because you do not have a community of like-minded believers but let me tell you the truth it matters who you listen to if the devil positions a wrong person to counsel you and they give you a counsel of Ahitophel God may be calling you to a great ministry but you will hear a counsel that would destroy God's purpose over your life I pray for everyone here that in the name of Jesus if you are under the yoke of wrong friends I stand and I speak right now may the Lord set you free this night in the name of Jesus Christ my dear there is favor on your life but it's not speaking at all hmm? you're a nice lady come I'm looking at you I'm seeing a young lady but I'm seeing the face of you and another old woman flashing me and going back see wickedness is real oh let me tell you my brothers and my sisters wickedness is real huh this is a young beautiful lady you see her standing but you now look at it do you know let me explain something whatever overflow just listen i want to explain something you see this is the mistake that we men of god make sometimes i can look at a beautiful lady like this now and see the face of an old woman and if my word base is not sound and balanced i will i will interpret the vision i've seen verbatim and now call her a witch you see the mistake we make that we call people and then assuming now they are married i will now advise him and say mr man you married a witch oh you do you know what it means to be a witch so god is you see that god is is balancing a lot of things in our lives let's be careful because sometimes we may see a vision i already know what is happening it is true that the lady needs help but it doesn't mean imagine that i look at this lady now and say my dear, you're a witch no this is a lovely she has a beautiful heart i already see by the spirit very beautiful heart but it beauty and a good heart does not take away oppression it takes the power of God how terrible art thou in your ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves so many of you are here you find out for instance the moment you enter a relationship come for instance as you mean I enter a relationship with this lady and you find out that there may be something wrong in her life and it starts affecting me have you seen that happen I'm doing well in business but just because I married this lady I start going down and now you meet a man of God and if the man, if you are in ministry here please be careful you have to trust God for grace to be balanced are we together I can now look at this lady and say ah your wife is the reason behind your failure um what I'm trying to say is that oh there might be a spirit connected to her that is affecting me and the works of my hands but it doesn't mean she's bad a good man of God will bring about that separation and then through the transforming power of the word now help this couple to stand and become the best of couple because a body without a spirit is dead so it's not about condemning and destroying the body are you getting it now so my dear let me tell you you're a wonderful lady huh we are going to deal with this nonsense now this whatever it is that the devil is because this thing is affecting your life you don't know why good things don't come to you you're a very nice lady hold my hands father Hold it with both of your hands. I decree and declare. Ah! Halushia kaprahasku de bakatuskia. I'm seeing fire leaving my hands. In the name of Jesus, I command this devil I'm seeing through the face of this old woman be gone now. My dear, I set you free and I open the door of favor for you right now. Please, everybody, lift your hands. I'm seeing, I've not seen this in a long time. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing an anointing going to Benway State.
Benway State now. Benway State. You are from Benway State. You see that that power will touch you. Even if you don't know what state you are from. Benway State. Lord, where is in the name of Jesus? The power of God is bringing deliverance. Benway State. In the name that is above all names. In the name that is above all names. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I'm going to pray for you. Two things. I'm seeing that the devil wants to put stroke complete stroke the devil wants to paralyze you from head to toe but we're going to destroy that now in the name of jesus hold my hands i decree and declare be free now by the power of the holy spirit madam i don't know you but ah you please come Hi. this is your first time coming i need to pray for you what do you do ma you are jobless ma Huh? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit two of your hands are tied there is nothing you do that works and prospers it's not normal you are a very good woman please don't be embarrassed I hope I'm not embarrassing you I want to pray for you I give you three weeks 21 days ma your life will turn around in a way that will surprise you I lay my hands right now and I declare I'm seeing chains leaving you I command those chains to go father turn her life around in the name of jesus in the name of jesus please open your mouth and begin to pray hold on hold my hands in the name of jesus christ i open that closed door now i open that closed door now by the power of the holy ghost please open your mouth and begin to pray everyone open your mouth and pray The Lord is asking me to stand here, just here, just to stand here. Because the Lord is bringing breakthrough here and here, here and here, right now, here and here. I command right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, every planting that is not of God, I uproot it now, I uproot it now, I uproot it now. Lift your voice and begin to pray, please. Lift your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know our time is gone. We are going to be very fast. Sir, you're welcome, sir. Can I pray for you, sir? Why are they here? Priest. You, sir. You are a priest. I served, my father served and died. And Sorry, where are you from, sir? I'm from Mallory. Sir, I want to pray for you. The Bible says, even the lawful captives, even the lawful captives. My brothers and my sisters, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life after this miracle service. This, this woman, come. Madam, you, yes, come. Please, quickly, come. We're out of time. Say in Jesus' name. Say it in Jesus' name. My life is about to change. Say it again. Say in Jesus' name. Reproach is leaving me now. In the name of Jesus, let it go forever. In Jesus' name. Sir, I hold your hands and in the name of Jesus, every ordinance that is not of God, help him. I command that it is broken right now. You are an elderly man. But I use you as a point of contact. We break every ordinance of darkness. This, this lady too. Priest, you? Your dad? Your father is a priest. Currently? Oh, where? Oshun State. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? You are here because Jesus wants to help you. Lord Jesus, it is not your will that any man perish, but that everyone comes to the knowledge of the truth. I deliver this lady right now everything they have given you to drink and eat i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and i set you free now be gone now out let it leave her i'm seeing that the father has given her so many things in her life but in the name of jesus hi jesus power is really superpower really superpower that in one moment something that has been done in a lifetime can live 
out now everything that is not of God. A father is a priest, or not an uncle, direct father. Imagine how many times she has been involved in all of these things. But in Jesus' name, you are set free. This this man too. Why is he here? Look at my eyes. Just look at my eyes. You are receiving the healing anointing now. Eh? In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, grant him access to the healing anointing. Your healing power. Now, oh dear, our time is gone. This is... Sometimes I honestly wish that this, this, because there are so many things I see, but we have to work with time. This lady, you, come. Hurry up now, please, come. Uh, we're out of time. Wonderful lady, look at me. You are a savior to your family. You hear what I said? You are a savior. You may look small, but you are a savior to your family. The only thing is that you need to continually be serious with God. Your heart with him your heart with him hold my hands father in the name of jesus i take away distraction from her life right now by the anointing of the holy spirit i take away distraction i take away distraction I, we have we've not even prayed for the sequel my dear come this lady waving your hands come quickly your life is about to change come where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I'm here with my husband. Husband, yeah. where are you, sir? Let's clap for the husband. <laughs> Two of you came from Abuja. Last time. You came with? For SOM. Came. I can't remember. You came with your... Oh, your son was a graduate of SOM. No. We came with him. Oh, okay. So graduate. I want to pray. What do you do, sir? Um, I'm a minister of God, but at the same time, I do business. But it's not sir, working. I want to pray for you. Eh? Things are not working. You need the anointing. You are a sincere man. My dear, the prophetic grace is coming on you as I'm speaking now. In the name that is above all names, I stretch my hands. That anointing. You will start having dreams. Receive that grace. Two of you need empowerment. Ministry ministry without genuine empowerment will make it look as if you are wasting your time are you a man of god stand up stand up take that anointing now in the name of jesus you step into a new dimension i take away shame and reproach from your life and ministry from today you step into a realm of signs wonders miracles in the name of jesus can i pray for you sir look at me hold my hands hold my hands just hold it with both of your hands in the name of jesus i transfer grace signs and wonders strange testimonies your business between now and 30th of november sir your finances will change you and your wife in ways that will surprise you you will come back and testify in the name of jesus christ this man waving your hands come together with that woman by your side who is she come please two of you quickly let's appreciate them as they come oh, oh, oh. to you sir i want to pray for you ah. madam i'm looking at you you're a nice woman but i'm seeing you carrying a load huh i'm seeing you like this and i'm seeing a load on your head and if i don't pray for you this load is going to destroy you i want to pray for you where are you coming from sir? are you new here uh, by elsa by elsa hmm. all the way i think we should appreciate them <laughs> what do you do sir I'm a pastor. You're a pastor. You're in ministry, both of you? Evangelist. My ministry is separate. Your ministry is separate, evangelist. but both of you came from yes, Bielsa. You're an evangelist. Yes. You pastor a church? Yes. How long has it been? Okay, I was uh, about four years now in Bielsa. But you were somewhere? Yes, I was in Abuja. 
you were in Abuja and then you left Abuja and went to Bielsa. Do you know what happened? Hmm. Is it your church now? You're serving someone else's church. Okay, I want to pray for you because what I see God do through your life, I'm seeing God giving you two things, the grace for leadership, number one. Number two, the grace for finances. These two graces, God is giving it to you. I don't know you, sir. I'm seeing you for the first time. Ma, you are an evangelist. I'm going to pray for you. What do you do? You hold crusades and all of that? No, I, I usually have meetings every month. And then I speak on radio. I have a live radio. I do my evangelical on radio. And then oh, you do a live radio? Yes, live radio talk show. Three things. One, barrenness. Two, poverty. Three, witchcraft. You are carrying the grace to smash nonsense out of these three things as you are going back. Don't forget. Huh? The same grace on you, I'm seeing it come on this lady. This one. This one. This lady I'm talking to. I want to pray for you. Sir, this thing is an election of grace. You see, I'm, I'm also a spectator. The same way you are watching. Me too, I'm watching with wonder and shock the way this thing works that god can just change a man's life overnight overnight evangelism i hold my hands father this is a dear woman of god all the way from bielsa i stand by the anointing of the holy spirit and i declare fresh anointing fresh dimensions in the spirit and i pray madam the lord is asking me to pray for your finances seriously for your finances and then the lord is saying i should tell you to pray for faithful workers i'm seeing you do a program for women when you go back this thing i'm seeing is going to be a powerful program there is a program in abuja that looks like what you would do it's called when women pray i'm seeing that same kind of grace on you that you are going back to bielsa and god is giving you uncommon grace for women in the name of jesus I decree and I declare you carry that grace right now madam my God will honor you ah in the name of Jesus supernatural grace drink of that wine sir I'll pray for you the grace for leadership the grace for finance but I'm ah, it's not only pastoring I'm seeing you do what else do you do I manufacture paint you manufacture paint that's right sir what am I seeing this is somebody, it's, it's not directly the government, but this is somebody that is connected to the government. The Lord is going to connect him to you. It's, it has something to do with supplies. That thing will make you millions overnight in a way that it will surprise you. Please write it. You will see it happen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. I stretch my hands. Drink of that wine. That anointing. Drink of that wine. You will never be the same. I stretch my hands. I take away every limitation from your life and I decree and I declare your life turns around from today in the name of Jesus. Give Jesus praise. Goodness. 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 Can we still pray for the sick? We can't close this without praying for the sick. In the name of Jesus, be healed from it now. I command that devil, that virus, go now. In the name of Jesus, you go and write your test, bring back your results. Go. Listen, I, can we? You see how sometimes this thing we are really constrained. That's why we do our best. The healing anointing is already flowing. God wants to heal. Maybe I'll just pray. I'll just pray for the sick from here. We'll do it that way. Right? But make no mistakes. Just that you, that you are not coming out doesn't mean I want to pray for you now. We'll take a few testimonies now. In the last three or four months, I have seen, I don't know why this happens, but I have seen a dimension of the 
healing power of God, very creative miracles. So I want to pray. You are trusting God for a miracle. Lay your hand right now on your body quickly. I want to pray for you now. Please believe God for a miracle. Now, this is what will happen. Overflow. One, two, three. The roadside. And then those following us online. Our time is gone. But as soon as I pray for you now. I pray for you. The power of God is going to come upon you. I'm going to ask you to check yourself. Praise the Lord. We may not take all the testimonies. But since we have chosen this method now. As soon as I pray, I ask you to check yourself. You will be surprised what has happened to you. And whether you are in overflow one, two, or three, I'm going to ask you to run very quickly. You're going to come right here. Pastor Jimmy will be here with Pastor Alpha. They will just check you and we'll take one or two of the testimonies and I'll just confirm that. Um, how many of you brought your prayer request? Let me see. Did you bring your prayer request? Okay, ushers, this is what you, I want you to do. PR department, help them. Protocol, please help them. While I'm praying for the sick, I think we can do it too. Your prayer request. Please make sure that your prayer request or that of your loved ones get to the ushers. Just lift it. The ushers have a system of collecting it. You don't have to be rowdy. Those outside. You can pass it to the last person in the aisle if you will not bring any confusion. You can have that very quickly, please. Lay your hands now. I want to pray. Jesus. A lady in overflow one is going to shout a loud shout for everybody to hear as soon as that shout happens i'll begin to pray for the sick very loud shout from overflow one a strong anointing is coming on that person the moment that happens that's the shout there now i'm ready to pray for the sick in the name Please agree with me everyone in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now those under the anointing you don't have to bring them out I'm, I'm praying now every spirit of infirmity please make sure you are hearing me overflow one two three every spirit of infirmity right now by the power of the Holy Ghost I curse you now I curse you now say amen I curse you now in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit behind every infirmity over anyone's life. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Be healed, my God. The power of God is touching people already. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Overflow one, two, three by the roadside, be healed in the name of Jesus. Now I command every blood condition be healed from it now in Jesus' name. Peptic ulcer, the Lord is healing ulcer right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lumps, all kinds of lumps, multiple lumps. I command those devilish lumps to live now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a number of people having um, hepatitis. The Lord is healing hepatitis right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Eye conditions. In the name of Jesus. You're going to feel fire just come to your eyes. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus every pain that has to do with the bones i decree and declare let the power of god touch you right now there's someone you have severe pain around your back just right here your lumbar vertebra in the name of jesus i stretch my hands be healed right now in jesus name be healed in jesus name there's someone you don't hear well with your this is left left ear 
and then sometimes you just hear like a sharp you know how bees are Zzz, that sound the power of god is touching you right now in the name of jesus every kind of fibroid every kind of growth in your stomach in the name of jesus be healed from it now be healed from it now be healed from it now now whether i mention your case or not whatever is wrong with you i stretch my hands and i declare be healed in the name of jesus be healed in the name of jesus some of you when you fell under the anointing long before i started praying for the sick you got up and found out that you have been healed now overflow one if they are coming here for the healing please just clear the way for them overflow one overflow two overflow three and the roadside i'll give you a minute those online if you're healed you can you know just just send it as an inbox on our facebook page or you can find a way to post it i want you to check yourself now within a minute or two the moment you find out that the power of god has touched you make your way some of you you get up under the anointing you find out that the pain there's a lady who has a severe case of bleeding go and check yourself the bleeding is gone gone completely and i'm seeing someone heaviness around the chest is just lifted gone like that please check yourself very quickly and come we may not take all the testimonies but at least let's take a few while we are doing that let me have all the prayer requests very quickly god bless you check yourself quickly koinonia are you celebrating jesus the lord is touching people show them where to come look at look at god touching people already please make your way make your way the power of god has touched you those outside overflow one overflow two clear the way for them just come you can stand on the queue there and let's have one or two testimonies god bless you koinonia are you celebrating miracles here make your way be bold don't be ashamed make your way as soon as the power of god has touched you back pain since hold last on, year hold on you... just a moment please all make sure if 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 your prayer request has not been collected please i want you to wave it jesus is still healing people you just come join the queue god bless you yes please back pain since last year can healed. you sit for a, a few minutes just sit for a few minutes and then we're done let's just hear the testimonies if as you are hearing the testimony god is still healing people and I want you to make your way and then come to. Okay, go ahead, Pastor Alpha. My God, the... God is still touching people. I'm seeing people being touched even in overflow three. Overflow three. Check yourself right now and make your way. Yes, please. You go mentioned ahead. the case of back pain. She's been having the problems this last month, back but pain. she's healed now. How long come, my dear? Let's have another mic, please. Anytime we're doing this, please, technically, it should be a standard procedure. You should know what we're doing, please. So that we don't delay unnecessarily how long my dear since last month yes in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare it never returns again by the power of the holy spirit back pain gone forever heaviness in the chest disappeared how long my dear just when you came here in the name of jesus hold my hands um i'm seeing someone you had something like a a growth around your neck check it now you'll be surprised to find out it's gone gone completely gone completely by the power of the holy ghost gone completely in jesus name i declare that every operation of darkness over you is gone in jesus name give jesus praise deafness in the left ear since 2012 since 2012 oh come on koinonia how long my friend a man of god told me about it 2012 and i prayed but i was hearing those b sounds and i don't hear really which of them put your hand there now in the name of jesus it never never returns to you by the power of the holy spirit yes also you mentioned also how long yes. okay where are you from kaduna, sir. kaduna state yes, sir. that's where you are from yes, your state of origin no, biologically biologically where no, are you from i'm from each but i'm called i mean i'm from state of there's a reason why I said this. There's a lot. You don't know where you are from. There is a long story. Leave the issue of healing now. Where? Eh? I need to pray for you. Don't feel bad. Huh? Look at me. Where are your parents? Who are you staying with? With my mom and my, my stepdad at Kaduna. Okay, it's okay. I'll talk to you, eh? 
Father, help this gentleman because this gentleman is a great gentleman, but there is a lot I'm seeing in your life. I crush the hand of darkness over your life now and I declare be free in Jesus' All name. Sir, Koinonia, you are pain. not celebrating. You are so used to miracles in this place. He was feeling the May pain, God but as you prayed for him, it left. It's gone completely. How long? Since July. July. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord perfect you. Apostle, you mentioned someone with pain at the back. It was her for the past three years. What's your name, my dear? Juliana. Juliana. You mentioned something, the lower... Uh, the lower ventilator. back pain. But it affected her left leg also, this pain in Check her back. Check it now. Check it. Check it. Any pain? Yes, it's gone completely. Give the Jesus last three praise. years. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, it never returns to you again. Please make sure that we have the request. If you are still yet, if you are still with your own, wave it. Just wave it and an usher will come. Look at that man. And you are sitting quietly there. You wave it and let them know. Pain at the back, completely healed. Pain at the back. You fell under the anointing. Ah, see you looking. In the name of Jesus. It's, it's a good baguette, my friend. Huh? If you fall under the anointing and your destiny arises, it's a wise baguette. Is that true? In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, never again in your life. The power of God is coming on someone in overflow one. Overflow one. Please carry the person and bring the person. Overflow one. The overflow by the roadside. Overflow two. Sorry. Overflow two. I meant to say look how powerful the power of God is I said overflow one and nothing happened I just said overflow two then I now went to say she's had pain on the left left shoulder since how long my dear seven. let her talk how long 2007 you've had what I've had this pain it will come and go come and go but today it has been intense but when you mentioned the case the pain left it's gone completely check yourself do what you couldn't do up down come in the name of jesus christ i will pray but the person i'm talking about is overflow two overflow two the overflow by the roadside so you bring the person the name of jesus perfection for you right now in jesus name she's had serious um, back pain that back she pain had to start horse riding so that you can correct but today they asked you to ride a horse yes who said you should ride a horse the doctor no. or just advisors <laughs> don't, don't, she's shy <laughs> the horse this is the man it's amazing how you come for koinonia minding yourself and you are surprised to see people just carry you and you're wondering where am i going to Hi. the anointing amazing let me just talk to them and then don't worry, do your horse thing, eh? I'm just happy that you are healed. So you can go and ride your horse now for fun. In the name of Jesus, you are perfected, completely perfected. In Jesus' name. I take away this proverb called Ichabod over your life and over your family. I'm speaking to both of you now from Overflow 2. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. And I decree and declare that that proverb shall no longer be mentioned in your life. It will no longer be Ichabod in Jesus' name. I'm coming here, but you are the one I'm talking to, eh? Debbie, it's not the, this person. You hold this one. Don't worry, they'll hold her. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying he is going to use you to change everything in your family. It will be like a dream, but he is going to use you. He's making you a savior over your family. Don't ask how it's going to happen. It's by the anointing. The spirit entered me when he speak unto me that God is going to use you and change everything in your family in the name of Jesus yes go ahead she's had severe menstrual pain since she started menstruating that resulted in serious back pain how Came old are you now pain this evening sir how old are you now 21 21 and she's had severe menstrual pain yes and she came here with the pain today but the don't pain believe is that thing oh in the name of Jesus I cancel it forever amen. say amen by the power of the Holy Spirit, severe menstrual pain goes back to hell. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. She had headache, heaviness in the chest. Heaviness? In the chest. Okay. And then she had severe headache. And as you prayed for her, 
he totally and, left. And what? Hiccup. She's... The heaviness used to make her hiccup. She was even hiccuping during the service. But as she prayed, she's totally healed. God bless you. Look at me. Where did you come from? Kaduna. Kaduna State. You are going back, eh? Where's your mother? She's in Bauchi. When are you going to see her? I'm serving in Kaduna, so it has to be December. December. If I, if I give you an instruction for your mother, will you obey it? Huh? Look for 1,000 Naira recharge card. Eh? Yes, Send it to your mother to bless her okay. and watch what happens in your life. Yes. You just do what I ask you to do. It's not some superstition. Please, you get my point. It's just the law of honor that will trigger something. I release my faith with you. Your mother is going to pray one prayer for you that looks like she's playing. But you watch what that play will do in your life. In she Jesus. had also peptic ulcer as she prayed for her she was totally peptic healed. ulcer how long put your hand on your chest in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare peptic ulcer goes back to hell in the mighty name of jesus goes to hell forever she also had ulcer but she also had kidney inflammation she used to feel a sharp pain she's been healed of the ulcer now when she presses the place before press she it. Feel, press it press it any pain no pain gone completely Come on, Koinonia. May God forgive you. May God... You people have seen signs and wonders too much to a point that... God bless you. He had a sharp pain in his left side. Okay. You mentioned it. And then he also used to experience dizziness. That he would just be standing, be dizzy, and then slump. But as you prayed for him, he was totally you just slump like that? Yeah, they may even have to catch it. It happened once, August. August 26th. You just slumped like that? Yes, I was falling and then my brother caught me. Come. What if you fall down like the epileptic patient that used to fall inside fire? The devil will just wait until you are crossing a bridge. Then that wicked spirit will come because he comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. In Jesus' name I set you free. You are free now. You are free forever. In Jesus' name. Back pain disappeared. He's had back pain for a long time. Back pain, going, sir? Yes. In Jesus' name, let it go and go forever. Never to return again. In Sometimes the two eyes go blind. Other times only the right one go blind. But now he's totally healed. He can see with both eyes. Have you gone to the hospital for this? But sometimes you just go blank like that. Come. In the name of Jesus, put your hands on your eyes. I decree and declare perfection. It's not just the bones are what give structures to a person. Doctors tell us. That means that by this miracle, God is speaking through it, right? Like he's doing the miracle of Ezekiel 37. The bones coming back, be a restoration of it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.